Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. A momentous day. Wednesday, the fourth day of May 2016. Donald Trump has dominated with a 20-plus point lead in the victory in the Indiana primary over Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz has dropped out. The word is John Kasich is being pressured to drop out because all the confidence game, the smiling, the going, there was never voting in primaries by George Will and the rest of the uh, neocon bunch is not selling and is blowing up in their face big time. Now, they may still try to cook something up, uh, obviously, in Cleveland in July and consummate Trump insider and the head of the Stop the Steal move uh, will be joining us coming up later in the broadcast today to give us uh, the latest developments on the Trump campaign and how he expects the empire of the globalists to strike back. Roger Stone joins us for 30 minutes in the next hour. Wayne Madsen, who's the center of a lot of big reports, uh, because his article first connected uh, reportedly uh, Ted Cruz's father to uh, the investigation of Jim Garrison into the JFK assassination. Well, that is all over the news today because Donald Trump has been talking about it the last few days in response to Ted Cruz's father attacking Trump for the last year incessantly and basically saying he's satanic. So if you're going to say Trump is satanic, he can say you're connected to the JFK assassination if there's some evidence pointing that direction. I'm not saying that's the case. But, but no one ever points out that his father is running around foaming at the mouth like an attack dog. It's like, oh, Trump's being mean to his papa for no reason. Being mean to his old retired daddy who came here with not a dollar in his pocket and underwear, to quote uh, Ted. Uh, no, your father's been running around like a pit bull locked on to Donald Trump's leg. And so now Trump is uh, trying to gouge your, his, his political eyeballs out. I'm just so sick of, sometimes I go out and I cover leftists and they'll come over and hit you or slap you. And if you even push them back, they start screaming and going, he just hit me. Well, absolutely. And if you punch me, I'm going to knock you upside the head. When I defend myself, that's not a bad thing. They'll also come and try to shut down your free speech. And when you try to speak out, they say, hey, he's censoring me. I'm here to disrupt your speech. Now, when I talk about left-right paradigm, the establishment controls the establishment left, the establishment right. And so they create a false left-right paradigm of choice in the establishment. But with this populist movement happening and Donald Trump is the head of it, the figurehead of it, the veneer is peeling away and we have a real chance of taking back either one of these parties or both. And so a lot of the establishment media people are saying this heralds the end of the Republican Party. What's happened with Donald Trump? Yeah, bringing uh, two and a half million new voters, even more than Reagan did in, uh, having huge numbers with the uh, blacks uh, and others, uh, Hispanics. Oh, yes, it's the big tent approach that they're so afraid of with Donald Trump. And Hillary Clinton is on the verge of being indicted or the Republican Party leaking information uh, or that is the FBI to the Republican Party that can bring her down. But they don't even want that to happen at the top of the Republican Party because they're all part of the same club. And as George Carlin famously said, we ain't in it. So that's all coming up. But you know why he went from 10 points ahead in the last week in Indiana and other areas to 20 plus points ahead. And it was the image of illegal aliens with Mexican flags running around screaming racist epithets and claiming that Donald Trump had done all these horrible things to him. That image for the American people really resonated with what Donald Trump's been warning about. We're going to talk about this on the other side. We're also going to break down the, the next attacks that I think uh, that are going to be leveled and, and that are going to be coming. But separately, I meant to show it a few weeks ago, and it's somewhere around here. My daughter made a Donald Trump card, my eight-year-old. And I want to show that on air if we can find it, because a lot of little people are counting on Trump. Well, Donald Trump and his populist nationalist supporters defied the entire combined mainstream media, the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, as well as foreign governments, religious leaders, and others piling on to demonize Donald Trump with a lot of unfair smears and attacks 
and misrepresentations. Roger Stone joins us in the next hour to break down what he expects to be the next flotilla of attacks on Donald Trump and more. Wayne Madsen with the JFK connection to the father of Ted Cruz is popping on and investigative journalist John Rappaport on the latest on TPP and other international treaties that are openly destroying not just our sovereignty, but hundreds of other nations' sovereignty being swallowed up by these secretive multinational combines. So we're going to be walking through the latest developments, campaign 2016, the latest developments in the economy, the latest developments in media demonization of true new media, a lot of science and tech news as well. We have Donald Trump saying the Muslim migration is destroying Europe. I'm not going to let that happen here. We have Ted Cruz dropping out. Uh, we have Trump is, quote, pivoting into Alex Jones' presidency with his conspiracy theories, Fox News. Uh, we have so much more to break down today. But before we uh, go any further, I want to be very, very clear about something. The main reason I have supported Donald Trump is because the globalists have been so panicked by him for real. And I've studied it very, very closely. This was not some shell operation where they came out and acted like they hated me or hated Donald Trump or hated someone else uh, so that they could then uh, try to position a political idea. You see, what I'm getting at is this. The establishment, the social engineers know that they're hated. They know that the mainstream media has a 6% believability and trust rating. They know Congress has an 8 to 9% trust and approval rating. They're fully aware of all of that. And so it would be a sophisticated move for them to sometimes act like they are against a position or a topic or an individual when they're really for it, if they want to get that policy into place. Now, studying these people and watching how they operate, it is their arrogance that undermines them. They're not sophisticated enough to do that. The private run-for-profit Federal Reserve in the three years leading up to 1913, when they got the income tax passed, when they had the U.S. senators removed from the states and taken to the federal level, when they basically engaged in their first level coup d'etat over the republic, they've been expanding that beachhead uh, ever since then. They were sophisticated enough to pay for op-ed pieces all over the country, paid for by the big banking associations, critical of the Federal Reserve. And that's because they were going up against a very savvy, informed, educated public whose national sport was politics and being inf informed and not letting the establishment screw you. It had been that way before the Revolutionary War 240 years ago, before that even started. So I have seen historical examples of where different uh, robber baron groups will act like they are against someone knowing that they're so loathed that they might be able to trick the populist into supporting their agenda. But nowadays the elites are so decadent, so arrogant on such power trips, and even their minions in the media are, and so delusional. They don't care if they have a 6% trustability rate. They don't care if their ratings continue to implode into almost invisible numbers. They don't care because they believe in the teleprompters. They believe in the big lights. They believe in the New York houses and the New York condos and the New York penthouses. And they still just want that vestigial ceremonial power trip for themselves. You watch the pathetic mummies uh, and Skeksy-like crones uh, at the National Press Club uh, event, National Press Dinner, that Obama uh, presided over. It was like a, a, a funeral or a wake or something. So they know they're discredited. They know they're a joke, but they're still holding on to the facade because it's all they've got. And people are probably tuning in saying, okay, we don't know about the election results. We don't know about what's coming next. We want to celebrate the victory of Trump. 
Uh, we want to talk about how much the illegals hate him and where all that's going. I'm going to cover all that because I want to cover it too, but my broadcast is simply where I'm at mentally and what I'm thinking and what you're thinking and what our guests are thinking. And so I am sitting here looking at this, going to the next phase, as Obama prepares to leave office, uh, as hopefully, uh, as Hillary tries to get into office, and as Donald Trump appears to be clinching the nomination because the establishment tried to sell the idea that the vote didn't count, but that backfired. They tried to also sell the idea he was racist and evil and horrible and, and that no one would ever support him. But because they're so discredited, that blew up in their face. So I'm thinking, are they going to pull a stunt at Cleveland in July and still try to steal the election or the nomination? Or are they going to move on to plan B and try to assassinate Trump? That's another question. Or will they try to now meet with him and co-opt him and get him to sell out to him? There are a lot of different pieces on the table here, and I want to open the phones up later in the hour and into the second hour and third hour and fourth hour today to get your view and your perspective on this because I'm normally very, very decisive once I see the angle and once I know the enemy's moving in a certain direction. I can look at what they're doing and I can tell you they've got a lot of different battle plans, a lot of different programs, but everything they've done has turned into garbage not not gold they have the opposite of the minus touch and so they're undecided in my view in my studied research in my studied uh, gauging of them they're in disarray right now they don't know what they're going to do so i can't tell you what i think they're going to do at this point because they don't know but i do know what their different options are historically and from their pathology from their criminology from their psychology from their sociopathy. So we're going to be discussing this and wargaming it today throughout the broadcast to really try to get a gauge on what the next shoe to drop is. And of course, Roger Stone, big Trump insider, veteran of nine Republican campaigns, uh, head of StopTheSteal.org, uh, who the White House is now officially demonizing and saying that I'm the, I'm the head evil ringleader. 9-11 conspiracy theorist Alex Jones is chief promoter for Roger Stone's pro-Trump Stop the Steal rally. That's a Media Matters openly run by the White House. What's funny, I saw a bunch of articles this weekend and, and, and throughout the week saying, Donald Trump's discredited, he's a conspiracy theorist, talking about the JFK assassination and Saudi Arabia and 9-11. It's admitted that Saudi Arabia was involved in 9-11, and our government knew in order to stand down and order the FBI to stop tracking the individuals. That's open and shut. So Donald Trump has credibility. I have credibility for saying that, but they try to spin it and say there is no credibility. So here's what we're looking at, in my view. I want to get your take on it. Your two cents, I'm sure, will be very valuable to the overall brainstorm that we're having here publicly. That's all this is, is a, an emergency council of the people uh, and uh, an attempt to raise the alarm about known globalist operations and to put our heads together. So I'll just say it. Uh, I know they've been panicked by Trump. I know they've thrown everything they can at him and it's failed. So what will they do next? I'd say, B, will they still try to steal it? Will they assassinate him? You know, that's the subsections of that. Or will they try to co-opt him? I don't think Donald Trump is a bad person. And I think overall he's a nationalist and his history shows that. And he does want to be the guy that's the turnaround guy that saves America and becomes the next George Washington. If he understands destiny and doing the right thing, he should go for that. But the globalists have a way of wearing you down, coming after you, intimidating you, and getting you to slowly sell out by increments. And I think you're going to see that be the main system overall that, that is going to be used, and they're going to send Republican insiders now to Trump to see if he can be basically brought to heel, domesticated to a certain extent, and to see if they can co-opt him. And he knows the art of the deal. So Trump, at, at a certain respect, this is the greatest danger point. He doesn't sell out. He doesn't take their money. He does it his way. He wins. They know he'll destroy Hillary. The real numbers show that. She's in political trouble, criminal trouble. He then starts accelerating towards the election and then gets them to capitulate to a lot of the things he wants. But also he starts making deals with them. 
And that's where the people come in, keeping Trump honest, keeping his nose to the grindstone. And that's why this is such an important fight. Now, again, the biggest sign that Trump's the real deal is that the system had a heart attack and a conniption fit and a stroke over him. But a lot of that is because he didn't ever confer with them. He didn't work with the lobbyist. He didn't work with the K Street boys. He didn't work with the media. He didn't buy advertising. He didn't buy the political consultants. He didn't spend the billion dollars that somebody like Hillary Clinton has already spent in this campaign. So they're, they're mad about that, that he just kind of bulled his way to the head of the line and took over their system. That's why they're really mad at him, folks. Now, if they think he's really going to fight the New World Order, they're going to put a bullet in him. So I'm just telling you, that's the epic moment we're at. I had to support him just to throw stuff into a disarray and create chaos in the enemy's operation and, and to reveal the enemies and have them throw out all the stops to try to steal the election to stop Trump. Now that he's moving into the prime position, the real next level chess game starts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, get into the serious news here. Let me let me try to condense that that 12 minutes of analysis down because I know you get this, but we need to get this out of the public right now. We can't turn Donald Trump into a messiah figure, into a man on a white horse. Donald Trump has done things his own way. He has himself gone out like the globalists do and worked the system to his benefit. He's exposing fundamental pillars of the new world order, as David Knight points out. The open borders, the globalism, the one-sided trade deals, national sovereignty being transferred to unelected groups. He is doing things that the mere discussion of it forms the shape of the populist movement to be anti-new world order. I'm getting chills. The fruits of Donald Trump right now are the most delicious, wholesome, good things for the people of the world. To the globalists, they are big, giant, long, black coffin nails, about eight inches long, and scare the daylights out of them. I mean, Donald Trump is a big, fire-breathing dragon to them, okay? That said, I've been backing him. But let me tell you, they don't know if he's going to sell out to them. They don't know. All they know is he came and got at the head of the line in front of them and took over something they'd hijacked and they run, and arrogant people who for decades have been sitting up there like George Will, the establishment lackey fake conservatives that are there as Judas goats to sell out real conservatives, showed their hand and came out and said, we don't go with the plurality of the people's vote. We, the sovereign party, decide. He actually said that. I've got, got at the stack, I'll read it again. It's so profound. It's even crazier than Karl Rove going, we control reality, and no matter what we say, a new reality comes out of it, as if I'm God, and, and, and I say, let there be light. I mean, these people are out of their minds. Listen, George Will, just because for 30-something years you've been wearing fancy suits and sitting there on national TV, everyone tells you what an intellectual you are, you're not an intellectual. You're a fake I could sit there and act just like you and act like a stuffed suit and act all conservative and oh, freaked out by things and act like Judge Schmales from Caddyshack, but I'm not going to do it. And see, they don't like Donald Trump either because he doesn't do that as well. He's more like the Rodney Dangerfield character that goes, what, be a member of Bushwood? I'm going to buy it, tear it down, and put condos on it. And he goes, you, you own Bushwood? Oh. You know, it, it, it's literally Judge Schmales versus Rodney Dangerfield. There's the real billionaire guy that's actually doing stuff and is having a great time buying everybody dinner. And then you got the so-called wannabe elitist, Judge Schmales. Lacey has a certain zest for life. And let's just say we're not going to discuss what happened with her. I won't judge. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, you know, uptight, scared of what people know about them, leading fake lives. That's who these people are. Little scared minions. The Weinstein brothers and Al Gore and Hillary Clinton and all these people want to run our lives because they can't even run their own. They're little cowards. Criminals nonetheless, like George Soros, but still jokes. That's why they crave power. And what Donald Trump has done has devastated them. Us backing him has devastated them. We've overridden the horror media. We've blown out their defenses. We've discredited them. They threw everything they had at us, including all the fake voodoo Christians 
who discredit real Christians running around howling, saying Satan has risen with Glenn Beck running around acting like a complete lunatic. And all of it blew up in their face at the end, including armies of troll-like illegals hopping around waving Mexican flags. All of it, we engage the globalist, we force them to show their arrogant hand, it blew up in their face. That's why I say resistance is victory when you have right on your side. But if you don't resist, then it just rolls over. Everybody feels like they're alone, and the next wave goes into place. But when I come back, I'm going to go over the news, the election, play the clips, talk about it all, but get into the next phase of the situation. Where they're going next and how we keep Donald Trump honest. And when I think, what I know is really going on with Donald Trump and what we can expect the enemy to do. I'm Alex Jones. This is the InfoWar, InfoWars.com. The toll-free number to join us for first-time callers to give us your take is 800-259-9231. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Sign up for the InfoWars Alex Insider. Alex Jones and the GCN Key free newsletter. InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. What's your view on the giant Trump victory devastating the establishment in Indiana? Also, Bernie Sanders won handily. Democrats are in total disarray. They've been robbing his delegates after he went state after state to create the perception uh, that Hillary could be the only one to win. But then Sanders started going after his own delegates to get them back. And the mainstream media, the New York Times, had the headline that Bernie Sanders was trying to steal delegates. It's like if somebody runs up and steals your wife's purse and you run and tackle them and the cops arrest you saying you stole the purse from the mugger, even though your wife's bill folds in it. It just, it just doesn't fly. And again, this is a total failure of the fraud system. That's number one. Trying to sell that there was never any voting for primaries. They never counted. Super delegates they invented in the 70s magically could, uh, you know, just end all that if they wanted to. That's like saying that referees can just make up new rules in a football game anytime they want. Or that maybe referees win the trophy. Maybe we pay the players money to the referees. Maybe referees in boxing matches, maybe they start doing the fighting. This is so backwards. This is so over the top. But they sat there with a straight face the last four months going, it's completely normal. It's the rules. And I'm like, no, you have public elections. No, you use public money. No, you hold out that it's one person, one vote, one woman, one vote, one man, one vote. And now you see, ladies and gentlemen, that none of it worked. And Ted Cruz has been destroyed. Even mainstream media now says, I've got articles right here. Okay, saying that the popular vote didn't count blew up in the Republicans' faces. And now it's blowing up in Hillary's face. And by the way, Hillary... The FBI is saying at any time, in fact, they're leaning towards leaking the info because the Justice Department won't indict themselves on Hillary Gate or IRS Gate or any of it. But she's known under three different criminal investigations. They're finding El Chapo with the weapons from Fast and Furious, 50 cals. Our government gave them. Of course, El Chapo's CIA. That's come out in federal court. That's why it's wrong to put him in jail unless you put his bosses in Laneley, Virginia, in prison as well. Even the movie Sicaro came out with uh, a lot of good actors in it. Uh, Josh Brolin does a good job. It's very accurate. And at the end, they go, look, the CIA is cutting back the other cartels. We run three big ones, and that's how we like it. We run the drugs. And the guy's like, and the lady from the FBI is like, you mean the government runs the drugs? He goes, huh, we sure do. Mm -hmm. and there's a cartel that's not uh, do, you know, working with us. We're going to kill their family. Uh, that is actually how it works, ladies and gentlemen. It's been declassified. It came out in the 80s and the 70s and came out in the 60s before that with Vietnam. But people don't watch congressional hearings on C-SPAN. The big banks launder the money. The low-level guys that Hollywood turns into movie stars have to do all the killing. El Chapo has to battle all the other gangs and be in hundreds of machine gun fights. And if you want to say it, even though he's a brutal murderer, he's the man. He actually does the dirty work, just like Tony Montana says in Scarface, which was written by one of the greatest screenwriters out there. That's really what he is. He's not a director, but a screenwriter. Uh, is Oliver Stone. He wrote that for De Palma. And he says, it's the big banks. They run all the drugs. They've done it for thousands of years. They make it illegal so that we go out and do all the work and so they don't have to follow any of the rules. And then we go to jail so everybody can point their finger at us and say, there's the bad man. And that's exactly how it works. Exactly. It's a joke. 
So you'll put El Chapo in jail and call him a monster on CNN and Fox News, and I'm just rolling my eyes. Rolling my eyes. It's all complete fairy tale, fantasy land garbage. But then you get the mafia culture that's in all different racial groups, all merging together with Hollywood and MTV selling it, where the young kids get involved in all this, and they're not for decriminalization. They're not for stopping the drug war. No, they like the drug war. They like the illegal money. They like all the glitz and the so-called glamour. And all it does is conduit you straight into a prison. And so there are all these new groups. The stories are up on Infowars.com saying that they're going to riot. They're going to burn stuff down if Trump gets the nomination. What are you going to do? Burn down your own neighborhood and then maybe shoot some firefighters and you know get put in prison and then wonder why no one puts businesses in your neighborhood? Oh, that'll really show everyone. And then that'll create massive racial and cultural division in America, which the globalists, the same ones that run the media, the same ones that put Beyonce on during the Super Bowl, you know, saying attack the police and saying hate your boyfriend or your husband and beat cars with baseball bats. They're teaching all this fake rebellion. So you'll go out and rebel against the cops or against your husband uh, or against the gringo or against the whatever the case is, thinking you're doing something when all you're doing is dividing and conquering the country, just how the British Empire and the Roman Empire and every other empire always controlled its vassals. You know what a vassal is? It's a slave. Totally ridiculous to see what the public schools and the universities and MTV and the NFL and every other mainstream cultural avenue pushes race-based, hate-filled black and Hispanic and Asian groups to run around vitriolically saying white people are the progenitors of all forms of evil on the globe so that classically liberal white people will circle the wagons, self-segregate, and be the management class in the collapsing West over all the other groups. So they're actually bringing back classical racism, but through the left, and the people caught up in it have no idea how sophisticated the operation is. But it's amazing, as the Gateway Pundit reports, anti-Trump groups, big Republican donors like the Koch brothers, spent $75.7 million on 64,000 negative ads, mainly in just the last month. It's got to be 200 million in the last six months to bring down Trump, and it wasn't enough. In fact, suddenly, they were starting to drive down his numbers a little bit, but it flipped, and they started going way back up. And why is that? Because... The establishment left all over the country came out following the mainstream media directive and beat up the evil crackers, beat up the evil gringos, the trendy white justice warrior, white knights, spit on and attacked the other evil uh, Trump supporters, beat up the Hispanic Trump supporters, beat up the black Trump supporters, spit on everyone, and the mainstream media didn't really cover it. Starting in Chicago and other areas, they lied and said it was all Trump's fault, and Ted Cruz said it was all Trump's fault. But the internet and Infowars.com, more than anybody, our reporters, Rob Dew, Josh Owens, and others on the ground, showing everybody how it's done, went to town after town after town. Joe Biggs and the rest of the crew just always going out to town after town after town and city and showing the vile anti-free speech Foaming at the mouth, frothing hordes. And it educated everyone very, very quickly. I mean, conservatively, just our videos every week showing people knocking out windows, attacking cars, beating people up, screaming Viva La Raza for those inside the race, everything, for those outside the race, nothing. I mean, that is a literal Nazi slogan if whites were using it. That, that is literal Adolf Hitler talk but being spewed by university brainwashed Hispanics. And it blew up in their face. 10 million views every week, separate from all our other views and listeners, 10 million. And by the way, that's, that's just on our channels on Facebook and our YouTube channels, not even counting what we show to millions on radio and TV and not counting everybody else's sites. I don't have time to go look. 
I went and looked at one video Rob Dew shot in California that had 3.4 million views on one of our channels, half a million on the other channel, and then I found another channel with 2 million views, another channel with 4 million views. I mean, that's like 10 million views one video. So when I say 10 million, that is a giant understatement because I don't have time to go track it all because I'm too busy moving on to the next globalist target. That is devastation. And of course, Trump is a dinosaur, but at least he is a patriot and a nationalist it appears. He still goes on the little Fox and Friends. And he still goes on the O'Reilly with his three million viewers. And he still does all that judiciously. We're not here clamoring like baby birds. Please come on, Trump. Please come on, Trump. We just want the insides of the campaign. We don't care of a, you know, senator or somebody comes on. People tune out for that. Folks like Trump coming on, but not as much as just having some listener call in with a great point. Because it's about the people. But see, InfoWars and you, the listeners, are leading the charge every day, every week, every month. You see us punching through the Berlin Wall of disinformation, changing the narrative, our terms being used all over the world. You know who listens more than anybody? The militaries. Not just ours, the militaries. And you know who else listens number two? The police. You know who's responded all over the country? The police. You know who got it? The police. Are there some bad cops? Globalist control? Absolutely. But why would we be idiots and make them our enemies? Why would we make Hispanics our enemies? Just because the Ford Foundation spent 20-something million dollars itself on this project in the last 50 years. It's over 20 billion. Just on this. Just on this. Just on Metcha La Raza. Henry Ford, of course, a Hitler lover. But 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 I he did some good things too when it, you know for business and things, but I don't support his political views. What I'm getting at here is that. This is out of control, sophisticated New World Order garbage. But once you see it and once you know what it's doing, it's game over. So the, our big danger is them assassinating Trump, trying to steal it again at the uh, convention. We've got this intimidation going by a bunch of gang members and brainwashed university students and people saying we're going to burn stuff down if you uh, nominate Trump. The American people, the sleeping giant of every race, color, and creed, doesn't wake up and take action until they get threatened like that. You have just guaranteed that if Trump focuses on these thugs and focuses on the intimidation and focuses on the social justice warriors and talks about their intimidation of free speech, it is game over. I've told the Trump campaign, you need to put your own people in disguise inside these leftist operations to show what they're really saying and you will bring them down. But I'm not going to wait for Trump to do it. We're going to go undercover now. That's what it takes, ladies and gentlemen. See, we're not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to do it. We're going to lead, and we are leading. And that's what you get with InfoWars is absolute 21st century warfare against the New World Order with truth. That sword cuts through their lies like nothing. They've got these big water hoses that spray stinking horse manure at the public. Well, that's not our weapon to just, to just splatter everything with stench so everybody just gets confused in the smoke. We just cut right through it with a flaming hot sword that just goes right through the hardest lies, slicing right through them. We are devastating the enemy because we have the spirit of liberty, the spirit of the will to take action. And when you get that will, folks, and you get that, that focus, it's game over. When you get the confidence and the historical understanding and know how the enemy operates, nothing on earth can stop you, folks, unless they start a giant depression or start World War III. And even if they pull that, Folks are aware of what's going on and understand the establishment is behind it all, pulling the tricks, the false flags, you name it. I want to go to Alex, Robert, Mike, Phoenix, Robert, and others. But it is just such an exciting time to be alive right now. And it is such a badge of courage, such a certification when they have Fox News, CNN, MSNBC almost every day lying about my broadcast and demonizing yours truly. These are people with shrinking ratings, shrinking audiences, sitting around their fancy studios, literally believing they've arrived because they're part of the establishment. I would never want to be part of the establishment. Do you know how I would destroy myself? If I took the Fox TV shows. You've heard Man Cow on the show, let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, you know that Fox show you were going to do with me, but I didn't show up. I didn't sign the contract. Nothing against Man Cow. Ask him. And other contracts they offered me. He came and he goes, I, I met with the head people. You've been offered four TV shows and contracts and money and didn't take them? And I said, yeah. 
And then Fox News had the nerve to go to the New York Daily News a few years ago and go, Alex Jones wanted a job with us, but we refused him. He wants showbiz, but showbiz doesn't want him. I was told that before when I was like 20 years old. No, 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 no. I don't want showbiz, jackass. I want freedom and space exploration and the next renaissance. Now, I don't care if nobody even knows my name in the future because my genetics are going to be carried on forever. That's living forever. That's victory. And I want your genetics to go on forever. All of us together, of every race, color, and creed, as one humanity. I believe in humanity. I'm a fan of humanity. I want to win. I want prosperity. And I want to smash the skulls of bullies and murderers and, and, and child molesters wide open. I want to see their teeth all over the ground. I got an instinct to win, an instinct to thrive, an instinct to understand things. I'm a pioneer. I'm an explorer. I'm a human, and I'm coming. I'm animated. I'm alive. My heart's big. It's got hot blood going through it fast. I like to fight, too. I like to eat. I like to have children. I'm here. I got a life force. This is a human. This is what we look like. This is what we act like. This is what everybody was like before us. This is what I am. I'm a throwback. I'm here. I've got the fire of human liberty. I'm setting fires everywhere, and humans are turning on everywhere. And we're going to get our metaphysical hands around your stinking necks. Make no mistake, parasites. There's an attack on the species by a guild of psychopaths, and they must be defeated. I'm going to settle down, excuse me. I'm going to come back to the next two segments take your calls, excuse me. <laughs> the epicness of the energy in the world right now, humanity struggling to go into the future. The fact that they're putting consciousness suppressing chemicals in the food and water. The fact that they're coming out with vaccines that have viruses that eat part of your brain to make you more docile. That was in the news 15 years ago. Look it up. Brain-eating vaccines is what I called them as a pop term to get folks to go look at these behavior vaccines or calming vaccines or anti-drug vaccines. They're coming after our will. It's the only card they've got left. And they're going to be caught doing this outside of their authorized trials with people. And the folks that, I'm the one, I'm not even bragging, this is what you can do. I was told in 1996 by a head nurse in San Antonio, there was a secret army and UN database of everybody's blood at birth being put in. And they were claiming they owned everyone's blood and DNA type preparing it to claim they own your DNA in the future. Years later, it started of coming out in the news after I talked about it, families started asking, families sued in Austin and in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and found out it was all true, and the whole program came out. Just like that, a nurse tells me, shows me the documents, I talk about it, it takes five years for it to finally crest and break, and now that whole program has been exposed worldwide. I'm gonna skip this break, it's too important. That is how epic all of this is. You can do that on any subject you want. I've been trying to push the chimeras out and make sure that breaks. Wait till there's a national discussion and all the folks that are obsessed on animal testing, you won't hear a word from PETA because they're anti-human and controlled by the globalists. Oh boy, I know the inside on that. <laughs> Anyways, the point is that imagine if people are mad that they test shampoo on bunnies. Where's the concern about human testing? That's going on. Or the chimera testing. Yes, they're growing humanoids inside pigs, sheep, and cows that are part human. So are the pigs and cows, so they don't reject them. I'm showing MIT on screen, human animal chimeras gestating on research farms across the U.S. And it's not a radical new approach. It's been going on for 50 stinking years. They're just getting ready to roll it out, but they're rolling it out their way. How cute and fun it is. See? And they can have folks at Fox News make fun of me and sit back in a confidence game like they're at the frat back in college when the new guy walks in and they all act confident and go, <laughs> Alex Jones claims there's chimeras. <laughs> They've done <laughs> You're sitting there with almost no audience. And those that do watch you don't trust you. You're a joke. What, you got a bunch of, I love old people, but you got a bunch of, I mean, look at the ads, catheter ads and all the rest of it. You got a bunch of 85 people. 85-year-olds on average who aren't even there because they think the girls are pretty. You're all typecast to make 85-year-olds think you're cool. I mean, you're really cool. You're really trailblazing the future. 
You know InfoWars just in one area every week for the last year dominates global memes that hundreds of millions of people look at? We're, we're the meme factory not even trying. The people that create all the memes decide to come to InfoWars to choose them and to launch them as a form of hat tipping. See, we... We are the future. See, the X-Files is based on us now, and the movies, and the and the culture. You are with the people who are preparing to be put in coffins. You're dead, Fox News. You're dead, Glenn Beck. You chose the Lord of this world, he who loves death. That's what you do. And I'm not, again, I love old people. They're wonderful people. I say take care of them, don't kill them. You know, a lot of them are great patriots. They have great knowledge of their awake. But the ones watching CNN and Fox News and MSNBC literally don't know, in some cases, what planet they're on. A lot of them are really informed people. I watch Fox News. My son watches it. There's some good stuff on there. But the, the establishment people they've got on there making fun of us about the 28 pages and making fun of us about other issues, they're a joke. And they don't control the narrative anymore. Now, briefly here, let me go to your phone calls. Specials that we have running right now. We have a mega food sale that I have gotten authorization. You notice I didn't say yesterday, hey, this is the last day because I got authorization to run it through at least next Monday. But then that is it. He said, look, Monday or Tuesday, it's got to stop uh, because, you know, just because they are going to run down on stores. They like to ship food within one week. They can still do that until next week. And then there's going to start being a little bit of a wait, maybe of a week or two. But the food is there, just packaged, totally fresh, super high quality. Uh, powered by My Patriot. We have the full My Patriot supply, Spectrum, and InfoWarsStore.com. It's drop shipped by those great folks out in Utah. Uh, when you order at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com, but InfoWarsSelect is their entire spectrum of food, private labeled with our label to contractually get around the already lowest prices in the industry they have when you get 10% off. We normally offer that. It's already some of the lowest prices at InfoWarsStore.com. 30 to 40 percent off and folks are really taking advantage of this because they've done their shopping they know it's high quality food they know it lasts 25 years it's packaged it's insurance you can eat all the crazy stuff going on in the world all the globalist programs for destabilization trying to start wars the open borders all of it you're crazy if you don't have storable food in my humble summation in my humble view infowarsstore.com infowarsselect.com takes you right to the storable foods we also have 10 percent off all other preparedness and survival items from non-GMO heirloom seeds, huge selection, very low prices already, 10% off shortwave radios, water filtration systems, uh, and then you can also get auto ship, get 10% off, free shipping on orders of $50. There's just a bunch of different specials that compounded together are the lowest prices on many items you'll find even against Amazon. G-Shock watches, uh, our nutraceuticals are all 10% off. That's DNA Force, Survival Shield, um, Super Male Vitality sold out. Uh, Anthroplex is very similar, very good formula. Uh, it's less as well. It's available at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. <sighs> Take advantage. Okay, I'm going to settle down here. This is just such an epic time to be alive. But I'm going to show one more thing before I go to a call, and that's this. My youngest daughter made this a few weeks ago. I wanted me to show it on air, and I never got around to it because I was so busy. If you're a TV viewer, you can see it. I'll describe it for radio listeners. And it says, uh, vote for Trump with an, a heart that is an American flag. And she made a bunch of these and was handing them out to visitors uh, that came over for a barbecue at my house. And I'm going to tell Trump something right now. I like you. I think I've assessed you correctly. You're, you're, you're trying to force the globalists to capitulate to you. That's why they don't like you. You're showing how weak they are. You're a man of destiny. I have a lot of respect for you. And I know you understand building something for humanity is the ultimate strength, not being a parasite. So I believe you're a builder and an empowerer. You're not perfect. Nobody is. But if you go sideways on us and if you betray my daughter or anybody else, I want Donald Trump to know something. I'm going to do everything I can to politically come after you. And it's not going to be a bunch of idiots burning an American flag screaming Viva La Raza, okay? Fought about the Ford Foundation. I want Donald Trump to know. It's not a threat. I'm just saying, you hurt us. You betray us. You betray my daughter. That doesn't mean you, you don't make some compromise. doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Nobody can be. They're going to misrepresent and claim he sold out. But I'm telling you, take on the globalists. You got our full backing. But I, I don't really get behind the candidates a lot, but I can tell the system was scared. They know you at least are for real trying to take over from them, and that scares them enough. Now, you better be trying to take the republic back for the people, and you say you are, and you say you're committed, and you, you, you seem to be a very humble person at the end of the day and down to earth. And I know a lot of folks that know you behind the scenes, and they say you're a Totally aware of the New World Order before I was even born, that you're basically like a Patriot sleeper cell 
really planning to go after him. And, and so I I believe that. But I've looked at all the angles, Trump, and I'm just saying, I like to say, believe me, I say that too. Um, the people in this country are sick of being betrayed, and we want to see aggressive moves against the New World Order. And we will back you all the way, and we want to see these, these scumbags destroyed politically. And we want to see you, uh, with American people's backing, run over the traitors and to bring them to justice and to prosecute Hillary and so much more. So you've got my backing, and uh, you've got my commitment, and you've got my support, and, and you know it. You've got a lot of the people's support. You've got my eight-year-old support and my son's support and my daughter's support. My son liked you, you know, before I was even on board, when I was studying you. Uh, and I talked about that when you were on air. And Trump, I know you watch the show. So I'm just telling you right now, you cannot betray this right here and be like the, oh, the, the entire criminal class that loves betraying people and loves selling folks out. I know you believe in the big idea of humanity versus the new world order and prosperity and sovereignty. So we're supporting you, but do not let my eight-year-old daughter down or I'll take it very, very personal. It's not a threat. I, I, I don't like committing to somebody and supporting them and then having the fear they're going to stab me in the back. I'm just telling you that I think you understand you've hit the zeitgeist here, and this isn't a game, it's not a joke. We'll be back with your call. Stay with us. Phoenix and FEMA 9, Robert in Alabama, and others. Trump is only a manifestation of populism across the world rising. The third world is collapsing. The globalists have engineered this by design to consolidate control. They intend to ride this dragon, to ride the tiger, and gain full control. But as elites do throughout history, as Hitler turned east towards Russia, all they do is sow the seeds of their own destruction. And I hope not our seeds with it. Now let's go to uh, Phoenix and FEMA Region 9. Says Trump will not go uh, global. Uh, and he goes on. Robert says Army vet Trump on Indiana. Hillary indicted? Question mark. Uh, Alex wants to talk about Trump and the scenarios to play out next. Robert in South Carolina. Comment on the elite and Trump. Mike. I want you to talk about America and the globals. We'll get to everybody. Thank you for holding. Phoenix in FEMA Region 9, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, and thanks so much for everything you do. I, um, I just wanted to say that I don't think that Trump is going to give in to these globalists. I think he's, you know, he's a man of the people, and I don't think he's going to back down. And I think the most important thing he's going to have to do is pick a really good cabinet to keep him safe. Well, yeah, he met with Haas, the head of the CFR, and then Haas came out and attacked him a week later saying he was horrible. And I've talked to folks that were there at the meeting. They said Trump totally disagreed with him and said, that's a load of baloney, and you know we're getting screwed over. America pays for the globalist and their empire. See, we pay for the empire. Our name's on it. We die for it. We get the bad name for it. We don't even get the booty. I'd be against having an empire robbing stuff and hauling it back here to us. That's immoral. But we're not even doing that. We have the worst type of empire we could have. Uh, I hear you. I think Trump's for real overall, uh, and he likes prosperity. He doesn't like screwing people over. I mean, he might go after somebody because they try to, you know, hold something over his head for a golf course when he's already got the deal going. He's not perfect. Uh, but at the same time, he's an alpha male that is successfully defeating the globalist with the people's help, and that alone, uh, he gets high, high marks from me. Thank you, Phoenix. Robert in Alabama, you're on the air worldwide. Uh, yeah, Alex. Um, how, how you doing? I consider you a true patriot. Well, God bless you, brother. You know, I'm a I'm a veteran. I served three tours in Iraq and uh, and even in the Persian Gulf War. You know, and um, I'm really sick and tired of um, the way uh, media portrays all this. You know, um, I'll go to like Hillary. I'm glad for one thing that that Trump did get Indiana, and I want to say that. America must indict Hillary Clinton. Of all my time in, in the military, um, she mishandled um, uh, government information. Uh, it's classified. Yeah, no, she, she, thousands of times what Petraeus did, and she's not in trouble. I know. And on her own personal server. You know, that in itself is a, is a class one felony and, and could be, in some cases, result in life in prison. Uh, open and shut. It's it's a it's ten year felony if you didn't even know you know, that you were doing it, and if you did it knowingly, it's espionage. You can be executed, actually. And then uh, if President Obama were to pardon Hillary uh, for a compromise of the magnitude, um, he would render himself in a historical record as enemy of the state. 
and he could face criminal prosecution. Absolutely. What's your you know, gut on Trump? I mean, the, uh, is he for real? Because he's absolutely dominating. Uh, he's, he's got the people behind him. He better be for real. Well, I, I agree with you, Alex. I, I think um, I feel that there's some patri patriotism in him, and and I'm definitely I'm glad that he beat Cruz because um, I think um, Cruz would have been that trickster to to really sell us out to a. Well, a yeah, I mean, look how Cruz claimed that Trump was causing the violence when he never had anything to do with it, and then I mean, people with Mexican flags screaming Villa Raza, Black Lives Matter, social justice warriors, and Cruz is saying it's Trump's fault when they're knocking people's teeth out and turning over police cars. That's all you need to know about Cruz, and that's why Cruz bit off more than he could chew. Now, we, I, I want to move on now to Hillary. How does he defeat Hillary? Roger Stone's coming up. You, you want to hear the inside scoop on where the campaign goes from here? You're about to hear it all. And don't worry, we're going to go to get Robert and Alex uh, and Mike uh, and everybody else. Thank you, Robert. Great points. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is where the defense of human liberty begins. This will be a day long remember. We have seen the entire media establishment combine, foreign governments, the communist Chinese mass murderers, the Pope, the Mexican government, the Saudi Arabian uh, crazies, everybody come out and say you cannot have Donald Trump. They have misrepresented everything he said, twisted it. They have uh, financed all sorts of internal and foreign groups, people running around with Mexican flags, knocking people's teeth out. Blood everywhere, foaming at the mouth, people threatening to riot if we uh, have the, the gall to, to, to actually nominate him. The Republicans coming out and saying, we don't have elections. George Will coming out and saying, come on, we don't go with the people's will. We have a sovereignty of the party. He actually says the sovereignty. Next, I guess, the party members will wear crowns or something. This is epic what's happening. And Roger Stone joins us at the bottom of the hour. Stonezone.com. Uh, the mainstream media now really hates him and you know basically says he's the secret campaign head. No, he's one of the advisors, one of the friends of Trump, but Trump is his own advisor. Epic history happening now. So my questions are, what happened behind the scenes? Kasich supposedly about to drop out. Where does this go? What's the real numbers on Hillary? Will they still try to steal it in Cleveland? Do they have tricks up their sleeves? Does a bear live in the woods? And what will happen in the general election? Well, you know Trump's going to go after and call for her indictment. You know he's going to take the gloves off. So the question is, will they try to assassinate him? Will they try to co-opt him? Will they try to steal the election? Will they start a war, implode the dollar? I mean, the, the elite are scared. But now you got the Chinese government saying, okay, let's try to reconcile. Cameron says, okay, let's be nice to Trump. I'm going to apologize. Uh, the Republican Party says, maybe we should go ahead and go with Trump. This is an epic historical moment. And the question is, he's known him 40 years. My first question I hope this isn't the art of the deal, though, where Trump's just bringing them to heel, crushing the establishment, riding a wave of populism, and then he makes a deal with them, I guess, to make him emperor or something. Who knows? But the word is he's a patriot and does want to make America great again. I think we've heard that before. So, Roger Stone, I tell you, this is an epic moment. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here, Alex. It, it just shows you how quickly politics can change. My original plan, as you know, was to come on this show uh, and reveal Ted Cruz's plan uh, to steal the Republican convention. I actually have a draft of the rules change that they were circulating. I had a list of billionaires they were soliciting for a bribe fund. Uh, and I was prepared to lay this out for the American people right here on Infowars.com. Overnight, things have changed. Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. Uh, it is for me a great day because it's the culmination uh, of a quest that I began in 1988 when I realized that Trump had the size and the stature and the toughness to be president uh, and that he wasn't beholden to the two party duopoly and the political establishment that's run this country into the gutter. The, the Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama policies, which are identical, uh, that have brought us to the brink of disaster. Uh, I don't think you have to have any concerns about Donald Trump. No one owns him. He is not a globalist. That foreign policy speech just days ago needs to be reread because that is the blueprint for Trumpism, a new proud uh, supporter of American sovereignty someone who wants to restore both American economic policy 
in military strength, or I should say economic strength and military strength. That is the real Donald Trump. You don't have to worry about him betraying us. He knows exactly who opposes us. The Chinese government, the Mexican government, the Pope, uh, the, 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 the list goes on and on. A man is defined by his enemies. Now, I did an interview on BBC this morning. Alex, it, it was brutal, just brutal. Uh, the, the world establishment is apoplectic about the rise of Trump. But this is a force of nature. He is not going to be stopped. He is Hillary Clinton's worst nightmare. Let's talk about where you expect this to go. A, will they still try to steal it? Uh, or has that whole hoax of claiming there's no popular vote, the party can do whatever it wants, has that now imploded? I think it has imploded with the, with the folding of John Kasich today on top of the fact that Ted Cruz threw in the towel last night. Opposition now in the Republican Party, I think, evaporates. Alex, I have to pay some tribute to you because I think you played an important role in informing Liberty voters uh, and those who were prepared to take on the world new order that Ted Cruz was not the real deal, that he was a Bush family retainer posing uh, as a constitutionalist, but that Donald Trump is the only candidate not beholden to the special interests, not beholden to the political establishment, uh, and a, a real nationalist for the first time. We have an American nationalist. He's got the resoluteness, the toughness to take on Hillary. He's not going to have the kind of arrangement that Jeb had with him. You see, there was an arrangement. Jeb wouldn't bring up her worst sins. She wouldn't bring up Jeb's worst sins. Jeb would lose gracefully and then go on to make millions of dollars out of his association with the Clinton administration. Those kind of backroom deals are off. Donald Trump is very definitely the real deal. But I'll tell you my most immediate concern. A group called USA Priorities, or I think it's Priorities USA, announced that they will unleash a $20 million media blitz immediately after the California primary, June 7th. This is right out of the Clinton playbook. It's precisely what the Clintons did to Bob Dole, a former boss of mine, in 1996, where they, they go to a period in which the Republican candidate has no funding, they use their funding from George Soros and other criminals to define him. So this is our immediate goal. Now, Trump's opposition to super PACs is well known. There is a group out there that I need to alert you about. It's called Great America PAC. It's a scam, a fraud. If people get solicitations, they should know that this group claimed that they spent a million dollars in Wisconsin to support Trump on television. They spent zero, headed by Ed Rollins, a longtime critic of Donald Trump, and Jesse Benton, the guy who ran Rand Paul's campaign into the ditch. This is not in any way an authorized- Oh, wow, uh, Jesse right. Benton's involved or, or running around acting like he's with Trump? Wow, I, I saw articles where they had the Trump lawyers telling that group to stop last week, and then basically Trump people saying, you're the only real group out there. That, that, that's, that's not even a pack, you're just promoting free speech. Well, look, th there has to be some mechanism to fill this gap. I'm aware of the fact that Donald Trump is, uh, I think, constitutionally and philosophically opposed to super PACs, but that's because of the corrosive influence of lobbyist and special interest money that floods those PACs. On the other hand, Trump cannot be naked in this period while the Clintons move quickly to try to define him. Well, well, I've got to stop you. Let's just go back and look. And, and this isn't bragging about Roger Stone. We're going to skip this break because we have limited time with him. Wish it could stay longer, sir. This is so important what we're talking about here. But people understand, you foresaw when you first came on 10 months ago, they'd try to steal it with Richard Reeves. You came to visit me here in Austin, so gracious, uh, to, you know, to come here and warn me. You let it all out. Your organization, my audience, and others at the core, but let's really give you credit, but the audience deserves most of it, took action, got involved. The media said, stop claiming we'll steal it. Your conspiracy theorists, stop claiming we won't honor honor the voters. Then they went from saying that to going, yeah, we're going to steal it. We're allowed to. They tried to sell that. We forced them to sell it early. It blew up in their face because you were exposing it early. They were forced to try to sell it. It blew up, I think, brought down Cruz, Kasich, and the, the Republican establishment and accelerated, catapulting him as the true populist. And my reporters, again, I don't know why we're in the zeitgeist, all over the country caught the Mexican flags, the beating people up, the George Soros-funded 
people. That has accelerated Trump. Uh, I just hope the Trump campaign knows, because I'm proud of, uh, of my crew. It's not me. My crew, I'm telling you, is good for two or three points he's got nationally. InfoWars is devastating the Trumpian opposition. Well, in fact, Donald Trump himself told me that he has seen so many of your supporters and listeners at his rallies. He loves the Hillary for prison t-shirts and he knows exactly where they came from. So Alex, I'm certain that he is grateful even for your support and the support of other patriots uh, who have stepped forward here to try to uh, clear the mainstream media myths about Donald I was about to say, just interrupt again, it's not about even credit. I want listeners and viewers to know you're having an effect. Stone's having an effect. I am, our crew. This is history. We're in an epic fight, and we are beating the living you-know-what out of the enemy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roger. You got the floor. Tell us what's coming next, how we defeat Clintons, how we keep this guy alive, and, and what we do in Cleveland. Well, look, we all know what Hillary Clinton's greatest single vulnerability is. She claims to be an advocate for women. In fact, her husband is a serial sexual predator. Whenever you try to say that on CNN, they literally unplug your microphone. They did it to my friend Steve Malzberg. They did it to my friend Kurt Schleister. They've done it to me. Don Lemon uh, is, is delusional. He's in denial about the facts. So I have no doubt that the women themselves, brave women, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, uh, and uh, 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 Sally Miller, and others will come forward and tell in detail of their abuse at the hands of Bill Clinton and their hands at the uh, uh, and their abuse at the hands of Hillary. So we can get rid of the myth of Hillary as women's. This advocate. won't be a Republican establishment where they wear gloves and it's already predetermined like a Don King boxing match. This is going to be Donald Trump savaging that witch. He has no choice. Look, we both remember when John McCain traveled up and down the country talking about what a great U.S. senator and a great American Barack Obama was. That is not the way to win this fight. And Donald Trump is, above all, a scrapper. He's a fighter. He's a brawler. He knows how tough this will be. He knows that organizationally we're behind the eight ball. But we're in catch-up mode. This is going to be the most exciting political contest in my lifetime. I haven't been this excited since Ronald Reagan defeated the Republican establishment went on to become president. It's sad that his administration was co-opted by George Herbert Walker Bush, who essentially ended Reaganism with his tax increases uh, and, and his international trade deals. If you noticed last night in his remarks, he focused right on NAFTA and the way it has sucked the jobs out of America. He knows who the enemy is. He will give no quarter. Get ready for President Donald J. Well, Trump. I, I mean, I know Trump's very, very private, and even his buddy when he's divorced or his wingman, that's well known, one of his best friends out there. But I've talked to a lot of prominent people, even before Trump was running, and then when he was, people would say, what do you think of Trump? And, and I'd, I'd say, well, yeah, I mean, I know he's a good guy overall in some things, and he kind of, a, you know, just a businessman. And they'd say, no, you know, no, he knows about what's going on. He's, he's a patriot. And later I found out for 30 years he gave money to try to stop NAFTA and GATT and other globalist operations, this has been a big cricket of it. But now I've talked to other prominent people like Dr. Corsi that's owning 40 years in business and others, and they say, no, 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 Trump knows everything we know and more. He's basically a sleeper cell for patriots. Uh, he knows all about the New World Order, Federal Reserve, everything. And since then, he's talked some about it. He just puts it in popular terms. Is that accurate that uh, that's why they're so scared of him is they know he really is probably beyond Reagan? Yeah, he's got their number and they know it. Uh, you can't put anything over on Donald Trump. He's both tough and wise. Uh, and uh, what they really, I think, fear is his combative nature. Let me address this question of the two Trumps, because there's only one Donald Trump. He's a guy who marches to his own drummer. Uh, he is a guy who uh, is his own idea man, his own speechwriter. So unlike most of these politicians, Alex, he's not operating off of polls or focus groups or reading some speech written by a 25-year-old. Um, he's his own man, and he has a vision for this country. It's a vision of American strength and American sovereignty. Uh, and this is why he scares the bejesus out of the political establishment. Uh, I'm looking forward for an epic battle. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're playing catch up ball, no question about it. But we'll get there. He will be fully competitive. Now, Hillary Clinton's going to have a billion dollars. And the truth is, Donald Trump has been so busy fending off 16 rivals for the Republican nomination. He has not yet turned to the question of financing the general election. We've got a lot of work to do, and, and we are behind.
But by the end of this convention, we will be battle ready. Incredible. Uh, I don't put it past them. You're the expert still trying some hanky panky in California or other areas and then claiming, oh, we thought he was presumptive, but this happened. But I mean, I kind of overall agree with you, though. It seems like the resolve of the Republican rhinos and others has totally collapsed. They are so discredited. Uh, and you know, people are saying, oh, this hurts the Republican Party. The Democrats are saying that. No, he's brought more people in than Reagan did. And it seems like their upside down bizarro world is being completely reversed right now. I expect to see surging numbers now for Trump. Well, first of all, I'd point out that he's already brought the deficit between Hillary, he and Hillary Clinton down to single digits. Uh, and her unfavorable is 55, his is 65. That's a 10 point gap. Now, in all honesty, we're, we can refire her unfavorable ratings just by taking out her record. I like a lot of the things that Bernie Sanders says, particularly on trade and war, but frankly, he hasn't gone at her at her greatest areas of vulnerability, her abuse of women, her disastrous tenure uh, as Secretary of State, and then, of course, the massive corruption of the Clinton Foundation, which isn't a charitable organization. It's a slush fund for grifters. It's a vehicle for facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes. I've said it here before and I'll say it again. Remember, Donald Trump was conned out of giving $100,000 to the Clinton Foundation. He thought he was helping children through a charitable foundation. He didn't know it was a fraud. This gives him standing to bring a federal lawsuit for fraud and open up their entire phony deal to the scrutiny of the American people. All right, Roger Stone. I want to, in the six, seven minutes we have left, uh, get into some of the other things they're up to. Media Matters, as you know, is openly run by the White House, and they said a bunch of articles yesterday. Fox host Trump is pivoting into the Alex Jones presidency with his conspiracy theories. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that, you know, you've got Ted Cruz. It's old news now, but it's an example. His dad attacking Trump, saying he's basically Satan incarnate. And so he just points to a Wayne Madsen report from Infowars.com. It was also in the Inquirer later. Uh, looking at some of the CIA possible backgrounds of his father. But it's, then he acts like uh, Trump mugged his father. He was just fighting back when he's being attacked. You know, if, if, if Cruz's father says Trump is the devil, then he can say, hey, it's being reported in the news. This guy's got CIA connections possibly. But that just shows how desperate uh, they are. And I think Trump should get more you know, more, quote, conspiratorial, because we know there's corruption. We know there's stuff going on. I think you should get into Fast and Furious, more about how he'll call for the indictment of Hillary, uh, more about how he'll go after these criminals. I think that's the key. Well, as you know, Alex, anytime uh, someone goes out there and blurts out the truth, the response of the mainstream media is to try to discredit them with that, with that title, conspiracy theorist. Uh, even though I think it's somewhat extraneous, let's address this. I had an email last night from Judith Very Baker. She's a friend. She's also indisputably was Lee Harvey Oswald's girlfriend from 1961 to 1963. She knew Rafael Cruz well. She confirms that he was part of Lee Harvey Oswald's crew. Wow. So uh, also, if one will simply do a computer analysis uh, of the facial aspects uh, in the photo, which, yes, appeared in the National Enquirer, but was released by the Warren Commission with a current photo of Raphael Cruz. It's a perfect match. By the way, wow. we know the Bushes, it was later declassified, Herbert Walker was heavily involved quarterbacking the operations in New Orleans. Garrison and others looked at that. And so, of course, he comes out of the Bushes because he's always been there. This all points towards that. Kit Daniels wrote about it. Uh, and so that just shows, folks, when you mess with Trump, he takes the gloves off. Well, he's fearless, and that is the point. So some people... I say, well, why did he even raise this? You're exactly ac exactly right, Alex. Rafael Cruz attacked him. Donald Trump, if you attack Trump, get ready to get smashed back in the teeth. That's the way he fights. He's a brawler. So this is not a guy who turns the other cheek. Uh, and uh, what was it that uh, Ted Cruz called him yesterday? A kook, a philanderer, some glass house stuff there, if you ask me. Uh, a, 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 a Pathological a, a, liar. Pathological liar. Let me get this straight. The guy who claimed that his wife cashed in her retirement at Goldman Sachs to finance his Senate campaign, and it later turns out that none of that happened. In fact, they took a million dollar secret sweetheart loan from Goldman Sachs. He's calling Trump a pathological liar. Absolutely. Let's stop right there. We've got a few minutes left. Other key tidbits, Roger Stone, consummate Trump insider. What do we do to... Uh 
to help Trump, to help the American people? What's the next shoe to drop? What are you worried about? I mean, first off, what would you call last night? How epic a victory is that? It seems like a total collapse of the establishment. Now they're going to activate the Ford Foundation, Soros, Black Lives Matter, foreign nationals say they're going to burn stuff down and riot. That sounds like a way to get Trump elected. These people are so delusional. Don't they get it? We have decided to finally fight back. The political correctness is over. The mind control is over. The sleeping giant is rising. Is, is that accurate? I absolutely think so. So look, I have no question that the Black Lives Matter folks uh, and the Move On folks will be there in Cleveland. Um, as you know, we were working together to form a massive outdoor march and rally to stop the steal. Uh, I'm gonna be conferring with all the groups, Citizens for Trump, Bikers for Trump, Women for Trump, Dentists for Trump, uh, this afternoon to figure out how we're gonna move forward. We're now thinking of changing that to a unity rally uh, because I can tell you, Donald Trump has been actively reaching out to some of his former opponents. They're very productive conversations uh, are coming together. I see a united Republican Party. There's a fringe out there, the never Trump people. I agree, but we should have it as a unity rally, but in reserve in case they try to steal again and have it be a pro-America unity rally. Absolutely, that's very exciting. Yeah, on the other hand, if you've already made plans to come to Cleveland, don't cancel your plans. No, no, everybody's got to come. See you there. We've got to be ready for any eventuality. Oh, look, this is history. I mean, we've got to be there to outnumber the Soros people 10 to 1. And, and the police are on the side of free speech, and they hate the, you know, the commie group, so we're going to be great. Everybody needs to be there. Well, unlike the uh, Black Lives Matter and the other uh, far-left demonstrators, we've applied for a permit with the city of Cleveland. We're cooperating with the Cleveland Police Department. They have helped map out our march route. They've helped us select our rally location. We stand with those men and women in law enforcement. As you know, Alex, the Black Lives Matter folks, the move on folks, they don't, they don't apply for permits. They just show up. And let's be very clear about what their goal is. It is to provoke violence. It is to incite And we violence. stand against it, and we videotape it nationwide peacefully with our brave reporters, and are exposing it, and it, it's incredible. Stop the steal. Uh, more and more is still important, but what's the best site for everything that's happening with Trump? Roger Stone. Well, I think you stay tuned right now to Stop the Steal. There'll be new information there, stopthesteal.org, to bring you uh, up to date on what our plans are for Cleveland. But above all, we cannot be provoked or incited to violence because the mainstream media will then... Absolutely. Hold on one second. Quite frankly, I have not done this since six years ago when the Copenhagen secret world government document got leaked during the big UN summit and it had the, the Russians hack the computers as well and got the documents that uh, the entire carbon footprint deal and the carbon tax and global warming was a fraud. The big universities knew it was all a fraud. They knew it was all a lie. They were directing the other universities to hide the decline. I had the crew go get a bottle of uh, champagne and I think I, and we'll also get some grape juice, you know, kid champagne for folks that don't want any of that. But I think at the end of the show today, I'm going to have some champagne here. You know, just a little, little, little glass for everybody uh, in, in the office that would like to partake. Just, just one little taste. Because I haven't done this in six years. Um, even if Trump loses, even if they assassinate him, we've won devastating victories exposing globalism, rekindling nationalism, showing how hoax media works, discrediting the scum, watching trusted media drop the last year from 14 points to six points in the AP poll, the lowest ever. This is a Death Star destruction event. I need to savor this more. I, I, I'm always so on attacking the enemy, moving to the next fight, but... but we really should take some time out uh, to celebrate what's happened. I'm not a big drinker, but I forget what it is. Uh, my mom gets it on holidays sometimes, and uh, weddings and things. It's the French champagne that has the orange label with the little butterfly. It's like 45 bucks. It's it's a, it's a good good to champagne. I mean, hundred dollar bottles aren't as good. I forget the name of it. It's one of the tops. Just type in top sellers and show like three different types of champagne. And 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 let's get some bottles of that here. Uh, for the end of the show, I want to get the reporters and people, anybody else wants to celebrate in here with some little plastic champagne glasses. Maybe go to Specs or some big place that'll have it all. And, and let's get some more d'oeuvres and some uh, other drinks and stuff, non-alcoholic beverages. And, and, and let's kind of just lay out a buffet here. Nothing fancy, just some 
just some hors d'oeuvres and stuff. And by fancy, I mean, I don't want to have a huge layout that takes over, but let's let's lay it out here for the last segment in into the fourth hour and just to have some champagne together. I've only done this once on air. I uh, probably won't even do it if Trump gets elected because then they might have a big depression and blame it on him. And there's some major angles there. If he turns out to be for real and we have victory against the globalist, I'll, uh, I'll you know, have th three weeks of celebration. But I tell you, we can defeat evil. And they try to train us that... You can't win, and, and, and only evil has power, and there's no such thing as good. That's all a fraud in history. I've studied history. Evil is weak, but it convinces good men and women they have no power. To quote Thomas Jefferson, all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men do nothing. We are creating the narrative. We are putting out the issues. We are turning the tide. We're telling the truth. And Previs and Curly and Cruz... And all the king's horses and all the king's men could not sell that it doesn't matter if he wins, we get all the delegates. And Cruz has been forced to now claim, oh, I don't get to just take these delegates. And he used to, he'd go steal Trump delegates when he won states. He's just quit. And he quit because everybody hates him now. He has crowds of like 100 people coming out and Trump has 50,000. Even though the Soros group shows up, tries to block the entrance so he can't get a crowd and kills his photo op. They've got The touch of death, not the touch of Midas, but they've got the touch of living death. They've got the touch of losers, of con men, of dishonorable filth bags. And, and, and by the way, when George Will, I've never really even attacked fake milk toast conservative to kind of steer and control, I never really attacked George Will. He's pathetic. He's there to keep people that watch mainstream TV in a coma. But when he came out and said, look, we don't go with the popular vote, the plurality of the people. We have a sovereign system. He said, I am royalty. You are trash. No, you're a stuff suit, fake intellectual. And I viciously attacked him. You know, instead of trying to blow the republic's brains out, I made the point that, you know, I don't want anything that bad happen to him. Uh, but, but I mean, you know, he wants to kill the country. How about he just leaves the country? How about he goes and jumps off, you know, in a lake or something or flies a kite uh, with, an, with a uh, copper string during a thunderstorm. I, I mean, just get out of our way, man. But this whole fleet of pundits all over TV, all over radio, but you know what? A few people, as slimy as Bill O'Reilly is and stuff, he wouldn't come out against the popular vote. Neither would Rush Limbaugh completely. Neither would uh, Sean Hannity. You know why? It's not that there aren't establishment types overall. But they don't hate the country deep down in their gut. With O'Reilly, it's a little different. That guy's pretty bad news. But they knew their audience would not go with it. They would destroy it themselves. They would dishonor themselves selling that, oh, you don't have votes. That's what Andy would say to him. He'd say, listen, you're one of my best buddies. I have you on more than anybody. I pushed your campaign. But you got to have popular vote in this. And people are mad. They're, and, oh, that, listen, I won the popular vote. I'm a, I had a landslide. He goes, no, you didn't. Stop it. And he told him, stop it, because he knew no one was buying it. See, you hit that moment where even the people in the establishment that don't care about the truth, they care about themselves, don't they? The new world order is not good for business. The new world order is not good for prosperity. These people want to tell us father and mother is hateful or he or she is hateful. That's a freaking loon cult. That two plus two equals five and raising the debt doesn't raise the debt and all the rest of their, and they're not coming after our guns, and he never said boots on the ground in Syria. He just said it 16 times. We're done. And you can have, and I'm going to go to your calls right now. You can have Gutfield or whatever his name is. You know, the trendy, ironic guy. <laughs> Alex Jones. <laughs> Man, I ought to pay that guy to make fun of me and say how horrible I am to have a discredited, bloated uh, group that sells diapers and catheters. That's half their ads. Well, he catheters off, you know, the country's essence, making fun of me with the Bush hack they've got on there. And then Juan Williams, I mean, a collection of pseudo intellectual traders. <laughs> oh, 
But see, they know I see through it all. They're trying to target their audience. And Fox News admits they've lost massive ratings. In fact, in one of their key demographics, they've lost half their viewers. About 20% overall have left them. And they ain't coming back, Jack. By the way, when there's other hosts that are eloquent and pro-liberty and get it and aren't backstabbing weird, mentally ill, hyper-aggressive, beta, false, dominant, false alphas, our problem in society is not real alpha males. Real alpha males want to empower humanity. Alpha females do. They just don't want to be run over. They're loving. They're helpful. They've got courage. It's all these fake alphas that are really mentally ill betas that are running around trying to dominate anybody else that wants to build something. But I have everybody else on that isn't mentally ill. I have all the other talk show hosts on, other websites. I love it. I push everybody. I could care less. I want more people that are prominent. If I find somebody better than I am, and boy, there should be out there, shouldn't they? I would put my energy behind them. I would right now. Because, look, I got courage, folks, but I'm not looking to get a bullet in my head. I'm not looking to get put in a gulag. I mean, if we lose this thing, I, I'm gambling here. But there's no gamble at the end of the day, even if I get destroyed, because shelling out to tyranny is the ultimate death, and I'm not doing it. Coward dies a thousand deaths. A man dies a single death. And I'm not going to have a living death where I sell out and want to be in New York and L.A. with all these desperate, scared, neurotic, mentally ill anchors and fruit bags. That's why I don't get selling out. Why would you sell out to... It'd be like if you were in space and there was a ghost at the portal window going, come out here, it's fun, I love you, trendy. And you went, sure, and you open the pod bay door and you get sucked out into space and die. You sell out to that? that I mean, <laughs> but I get it. People feel down. They don't have status or money. And the big fancy people with the teleprompters up on TV, they're so powerful. I'm going to your calls, but let's play this clip. Fox host, Trump is pivoting into the Alex Jones presidency with his conspiracy theories. And now we have the uh, lady that worked at the big lab and was tied into Oswald and knew him on record. I mean, th that's documented. Saying, oh, yeah, she knew uh, Cruz's daddy. Pretty big news that just broke. Um, a lot of evidence pointing at that. I mean, Cruz is a CIA globalist red diaper doper baby. I would call him a red diaper baby. What do you call a CIA baby? A globalist foundation baby. A Goldman Sachs diaper baby. Uh, but let's go ahead and play that clip. Here it is. Now we go in depth. Serious. Well, I, I think we're missing the biggest story there we of go. the day. Oh, no. um, imagine if Hillary Clinton <laughs> claimed that Bernie Sanders had a role in the killing of Bobby Kennedy. We would be going crazy right now. Yes. We'd be going wall to yeah. wall. But no, have we? Are we about to uh, uh, achieve a historical first in electing the first conspiracy freak president? I mean, is this the pivot we've been talking about? He's not pivoting from presidential. He's pivoting to Alex Jones. He's pivoting to crazy. And why isn't it news? Why is it? Maybe sorry. Yeah, come on. No, but he, he, it's, it's unusual that somehow it's not news when Trump does it. It's kind of funny. Wait, wait, wait will you tell yeah. the people it. what you're talking about? What about the National the National I'm not Enquirer sure the reason printing a story that. saying that uh, Ted Cruz's father was present with Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald just days before the assassination of JFK? And now Trump has repeated the story. Oh my gosh! I mean, the Enquirer is not news of the world that has Bat Boy. The Inquirer, I, only a few times has been proven wrong. They've broken almost every scandal that's ever happened and been proven right. I mean, I remember talking to Wayne Madsen, who broke this months ago on our show, our reporter, and he wasn't sure he was just investigating it, but he said it pointed towards it. And he's so smart, folks. He went to that place where Scalia died in southwest Texas with my other reporters and said, yeah, this is like Bohemian Grove. It's really creepy. I sense Dick Cheney. The books, the publications, I think this is Bohemian Grove. It came out a month later in the Washington Post. It was set up by Bohemian Grove as a spinoff secret society. That's how smart my reporters are. Almost like psychic. But, uh, you know, whatever. Madsen thinks that that's where it goes. And his dad lived there, fits all into it, looks in the photos, uh, connected to the bushes. I mean, it, it stinks to high heaven. Leiden said he was in Cuba under Fidel. He wasn't. He came here before that. 
So I don't know what the truth is, but his dad attacked first. So Trump can point out what's in the news. Now, let's stop right there. I want to go to your phone calls. Uh, briefly, we, we've extended the special, but it is now only running till through Sunday, and then that's it. That's as far as we can go, and then it will end then. Uh, they've been able to turn up production to be able to, because they want to always be shipped stuff within days. That's the rule. My Patriot Supply uh, runs it. We, we private label it. They're full spectrum of food. InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com. 40 to 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Foods. With all the craziness going on in the world, with all the weirdness, you need to be self-sufficient. This is the way to do it. Last 25 years, it's insurance you can eat. If you don't like it, don't need it, thank God, you know, give it to the homeless in five years. Or really good for camping or good for dinner. Food prices are going up. A good way to get around inflation. So many angles. Also, 10% off all other preparedness items. Shortwave radios, heirloom seeds, water filters, watches, security products, survival accessories. 10% off top InfoWars life formulas like Survival Shield X2, Secret 12 Deep Cleanse, Knockout, Silver Bullet, and others. Anthroplex is back in. 10% off that. 10% off when you sign up for auto ship on top of it. Free shipping on orders of $50 or more. A lot of specials at InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com is the nutraceuticals, but it's all on the same site. InfoWarsLife.com just takes you right to the sub-site. Like InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the storable foods. We also, uh, again, have a lot of promos we send out exclusively to people that are InfoWars newsletter members. It's free, InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Put in your email right there, and it will be sent to you. Anthroplex is amazing. It's back in stock after being sold out for months. Be sure and check that out as well. Okay, I'm sorry I haven't gone to your calls. I'm a bad boy. Robert, and then we're going to go to Alex, and then we're going to go to Mike, and then we're going to go to uh, Lynn and Lee before our next guest comes on. Speak of the devil, Wayne Madsen. Don't mean he's a devil. You know, it's a saying. Speak of the guy, and he'll appear. He's coming on about the situation uh, with Cruz and his CIA daddy connection to the Bushes, which the entire Bush operation is CIA. I mean, it was so big that it's even connected to some people that were in my family. I mean, it's like a giant combine operation uh, just over the top in the stuff it's involved in. And, and people are like, oh, what did you say? I, I've said that before, folks, and I don't want to know the details or they'd come kill me. Uh, but the point is, is that this, this shadow government is out of control. And it comes out of Texas and New York and just a few other places, just so you know. All right, let's go ahead and take a call. Let's talk to Robert in South Carolina. Robert, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Alex. Appreciate you taking the call. Yes, sir. Um, just with regard to what you've been talking about as to the options the elite has for trying to deal with Trump, I think there are three there are three possibilities that occurred to me, and they vary in, in orders of plausibility, just depending. But especially if you bear in mind that the goal is to preserve the agenda and not necessarily for the Republican Party to win in November. Uh, the most plausible one to me right off is the independent third party run that they've been threatening for so long, only they can't do it, I don't think they can anyway, they can't do it with a Kasich or with a Paul Ryan or with a Mitt Romney because that would just exacerbate the grassroots rebellion that they're already seeing and it's already uh, promoted Trump to where he is now. I think they would almost have to do it around Ted Cruz. He is the one who has, uh, he's gone the distance, you know, most comparatively uh, next to Trump. And he has, and I'm an evangelical Christian, and I can tell you my evangelical friends, so many of them are just fanatically devoted to Cruz. There is a fanaticism that surrounds him. Well, that's because they you said know. he is the Christ, basically. Glenn Beck said he is the Christ, and so you get to believe you're in the Christ fighting the devil. It's, it's just total manipulation. Right, and it's, I mean, there's no easier basis to use to manipulate people than if they think that they're fighting the devil himself. Oh, so, they come out and say I that think, myself and Drudge are being anti-Christian because we're saying they're operating like a cult. I'm a Christian. Uh, Drudge defends Christians constantly being murdered around the world. We're saying don't claim you speak for God and say that Donald Trump is the devil and the risen serpent. That is a load of malarkey. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. But there's so much groupthink among evangelicals. There's so much cult of personality. So many of them are used to being told what to think as opposed to how oh, to yeah. think. Oh, they yeah, get, they get henpecked if they don't do what they're told, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I believe they get shamed into into blind obedience and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, look, 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 when you get into the Christian church, okay, it's Catholic, evangelical, whatever, there's a lot of great people, a lot of bad people, but some of these churches are cults. They want your money. They want to break up families. They, they want to get your cash. They want to get your house when you die. And the preachers are these demonic, 
swollen little corporate pimps. I grew up around them in Dallas, some of the biggest names. They're having sex with hookers every night, snorting cocaine. They are dead. All right, let's go right back to your phone calls. I want to go to John in Australia as soon as we can, but Alex has been holding in Colorado and a lot of other great patriots like Mike and others. Alex, thank you for calling in. I, I, I said this earlier, if you're a new listener, one of the scenarios, they're still coming after Trump. They're going to try to manufacture stuff. They're going to try to kill him. They're going to try to co-opt him. This is an epic time to be alive, folks. This is incredible. Trump wins in a landslide yesterday. Uh, and um, the Bush minion has resigned. But I don't trust he's gone forever. Alex, what do you think? I had to crack a beer with my wife last night. And I'm glad you guys are doing it up there because I think that this is a time to celebrate. And uh, I think we have won a great victory. Um, and we should Christian make it also. fun to fight, even if we don't win this war. We're not going to stop. Go ahead. You better believe it. Absolutely. You know, they're just like you said, you want to fight, you've got one. And um, as a Christian and a veteran, uh, kind of going along with the last caller, but I also want to say that God puts people in power, and, he, and he's put Obama in power to wake us up as a form of judgment on this country. He's put God in power and you've seen it's divided people and we've seen the real sickos on one side and then we've seen Patriots on the other. And a lot of people lost for crews are kind of like the baby boomer generation that grew up with the TV. They believe Fox news never lies are still good people. And I know a lot of them and they're going to vote for Trump. Now that Cruz is out, he is going to win in a landslide. And I want to tell you, from my spiritual discernment, just how I know that you're real, I know Trump is real too. Yes, he's carnal. Yes, he's he's you know he's a man of the flesh, and I get that. We're all sinners. We're all men of the flesh, but he will not compromise. I see three scenarios: one, they're going to run the third party on him; they're going to try to kill him, um, or they're going to try and put someone in as VP and then try try it later on. Or they're going to try and pull a Matt Bracken uh, type of uh, scenario where right before the presidency, they're going to pull some big old, you know, scenario. Have oh, I agree. They could plunge the economy. They can barely hold it back now, start a huge war. I'm telling you, folks, you can feel it. This is an epic time to be alive, though, isn't it? It's amazing. Have you ever had William Forston on, um, the writer of the... Uh, uh, the One Second After? And he's also wrote a new book about ISIS attacking. It's called... Um, it's called Day of Wrath, a great book. No, I've heard of it. I want to get him on. Absolutely. And, and then what is the elite going to do when they brought the ISIS people in, clearly out of Syria? This is ISIS, a large percentage. What are they going to do when they attack? I mean, we're going to hold these people uh, accountable. And you know they're scared. If Trump gets in, the ISIS groups hit, he's going to arrest the people that let him in. You, I mean, you just know that. My spirit says get prepared, uh, get ready, uh, you know, get your soul right, get your get your heart right. Uh, but crazy time's coming up, but God bless you. Alex. Absolutely, you and, 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 and God bless you, my friend. We'll go to break and come back uh, with uh, John in Australia and then Mike and then uh, Lynn and Liam. I'll get to everybody. We've got two other guests coming up, but I'll get to everybody. I don't sit up here on a high horse, but I don't cheat people. I don't screw people over. I help folks. I'm a loving person. I'm a good father. But I see these Pharisees all day that go, I never looked at a Playboy magazine or whatever. And they're just hypocrites. Well, okay, fine. Did you ever go protest for undead children? Or unborn children that are about to be dead? Undead children. Did, I mean, did you ever go protest kids they are about to kill? I mean, did you ever go stand up for anything? That's all I'm saying is, I'm just sick of all these milk toast Christians all day telling everybody how to live, how to be just perfect when they're not out there fighting tyranny. That's what I'm saying is your heart like King David wasn't perfect, but he hated evil. He stood up and he had courage. I want good to win. I want to, I want to stand up to evil. I can't help myself. Objective. Empower humanity. Build a more moral society. Advance to space. Stand up against evil. Target. Globalist. Technocrats. Eugenics-based civilization. Anti-human psychopath guild. Weapons. The truth. The people. Voting with our dollars, praying, taking action, resisting, having courage, waking up, getting aggressive, realizing this fight is meant to make us. It is the animating contest. The journey is the destination. I want to go to John in Australia, but I want to play this clip. This is Obama at the Correspondents' Dinner making jokes about the end of the Republic. Here it is. Good evening, everybody. It is an honor to be here at my last... And perhaps the last White House correspondent. I got something big planned. 
You all look great. Fill them on your six. The end of the republic has never looked better. Uh, man, they're bringing us into world government right now. Look at that evil. Oh, my. Oh, it's so. That is the most cryptic. Whew. I'm getting like hot flashes beyond chills. Just my body is just looking at the evil in his eyes. If you're watching on TV. Whew, excuse me. But the good news is Australia fought back and it repealed their carbon taxes, but more of a conservative end. Austria just did it. Other countries are doing it. We're getting ready to do it. We're taking action. John in Australia, thanks for calling. Uh, what's your view on the Trump phenomenon from 18,000 miles away? G'day, Alex. Um, I'm a Trump supporter. Um, I think that this war is going to go to the next level. Um, and I actually think that you know, you've done a terrific job, but you don't realize how much power you have in this war. And I think you can actually go to the next level. And I've got a couple of ideas on what, what InfoWars could do to, uh, to take the fight to the globalists. I'll give you an example. Uh, if, if the Info Warriors, and I, I know you've got millions Yeah, let's of say them. it. It's the audience that has the power. Yes. Go ahead. Exactly. There's 7,500 state politicians in America in all 50 states. So all you need to do is win half of that to take over every state. And I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands of info warriors who would be suited to do that job. Now, to take over the Republican Party, all you would need is about 100,000 people. I think you, you've got that 100,000 people in your audience. Well, we got behind Ron Paul and Campaign for Liberty that blew the breach and opened the door for libertarians and patriots to get in, and we're deep into that phase, so I'm just one part of it. But, but I mean, I think it's happening, and I think opening up the Republican Party for a Trump to come in is just phase one. He is riding that wave uh, like on a surfboard. He saw it coming in and jumped on it. Absolutely. Second idea is how about, the, how about InfoWars create a poster Declaration of Independence 2.0 against the globalists or against the New World Order, and you would sell it to your listeners, and your listeners would put it up in their homes, and, they, and the whole family would sign the poster, just like the Founding Fathers did in 1776. And you would list all the grievances of the globalists. And by the way, as you know, there's almost this, there is a spiritual element to signing and committing, and that solidarity creates incredible unity. That is a great idea. And, uh, and that would bring commitment and it would be a daily reminder to them and their family and their children uh, that, you know, they're in a war basically to the death. Well, we need you now, to do a show, John. Do you got a show or something in Australia? We need all this natural, smart talent to take action. Uh, you sound like a pretty smart guy. I mean, are you involved in the media? Uh, uh, no, I'm not involved in the media. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. So, well, let I've me do this. Let me, let me get your number or your email and let's have Rob do or somebody interview you for the nightly news and then i'll play a segment of it on the show or come on my show as a guest because i want to point out the human the human talent is out there and what john said is just a snapshot all of it devastatingly good ideas great idea john i'm gonna put you on hold you want to give us your contact info i'd like to have you on as a guest but regardless we need to get that declaration of independence 2.0 out absolutely fabulous idea more calls coming up have we, are we about to uh, uh, achieve a historical first in electing the first conspiracy freak president? I mean, is this the pivot we've been talking about? He's not pivoting from presidential. He's pivoting to Alex Jones. He's pivoting to crazy. And why isn't it news? Why is it? Maybe sorry. Yeah, come on. No, but it's, it's unusual that somehow it's not news when Trump does it. It's kind of funny. Yeah, wait, wait, will you tell the people what you're talking about? What about the National, the National Enquirer sure printing a story Enquirer. saying that uh, Ted Cruz's father was present with Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald just days before the assassination of JFK? And now Trump has repeated the story. <laughs> now we go in depth. Serious. Well, I, oh, that's I good. think we're missing the biggest story. Now, continuing here, uh, folks, that is a clip that uh, Media Matters openly run by the White House. It's important to know that is the mouth of the White House. Uh, saying that, you know, Trump is going full Alex Jones. Yes, one of our investigative journalists a few weeks ago broke it. Wayne Madsen, so many times he breaks something here, then the Inquirer has it two weeks, a month later. And he, he talks to the Inquirer. He's in the articles. And uh, it is true that Cruz lived in New Orleans. Uh, now, Roger Stone has talked to people uh, that have been in and around the JFK case and who knew Lee Harvey Oswald. 
And they are saying that, yes, indeed, uh, they knew Mr. Cruz's father, and that, indeed, uh, he was in and around Oswald. But the biggest connection is the Bushes, Herbert Walker Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, ran the CIA in the mid-1970s from nowhere. Just suddenly he's the director and said he'd never been in the CIA. But later it was partially declassified that indeed he was in the CIA and was in Texas and Louisiana, New Orleans with the, the family oil company being used as a front for the Bay of Pigs, you name it. And who were they using as their manpower? Lee Harvey Oswald and a bunch of Cuban nationals. And we have this photo from the Warren Commission. And we have Jim Garrison investigating. And we have, right when the investigation starts, the father of Ted Cruz running away and leaving New Orleans. So, investigative journalist Wayne Madsen, the guy who went down with my crew the day after Scalia died. And to the ranch that no other media would go to. And they said, no autopsy, no nothing, but Prince gets one. And Merle Haggard gets one. And he says, I believe this is connected to Bohemian Grove and Dick Cheney, from what I've seen on the bookshelves, the way it's set up, everything, and who's involved. A month later, the Washington Post comes out and says, Scalia died in secret society founded by Bohemian Grove. I, I mean, wow, the guy's got a nose. Just if you're a TV viewer, let's just look at Wayne Madsen and just admire a true journalist right there. And we don't give out fake awards. We don't. Well, we like the mainstream media and correspondence dinners. He could go to those. This guy in the NSA, um, anti-submarine warfare before that, decades as a journalist. Every time I'm watching some C-SPAN hearing on 9-11 or something, they're in the backgrounds. Wayne Madsen, you know, they're at the National Press Club, you name it. A true patron. He's only on for one segment with us, popping in. He's on for 45 minutes tomorrow. Uh, coming up, we have another investigative journalist, uh, Mr. Rappaport, on a ton of subjects joining us. And your phone calls will continue, I promise. But... To watch them freak out and to watch them come out and, 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 and make fun of Trump when he's being attacked by Cruz's father, who's saying he's the devil. And so you got to vote for his son, the Christ, and then you have the prophet, the false prophet, Glenn Beck over there, fooling all these good Christian people. That's fair. If you're saying I'm the devil and there's press reports connecting you to JFK, and it's in the Inquirer that is one of the most accurate publications out there. This is not news of the world, folks. The Inquirer breaks most of the big scandals. But who broke it back on April 15th? Who broke it 17, 18, 19 days ago? Was Cruz's father linked to the JFK assassination? Cuban, hired by Lee Harvey Oswald, bears striking resemblance to Cruz. Wayne Madsen, April 15th, 2016. That is... 19 days to go. So joining us is the investigative journalist. Uh, just to spend a few minutes on this tomorrow, we'll talk about the campaign. You're going to be in Cleveland with myself. We're going to see you at the DNC as well. We're going to have our full force uh, there covering this, the big landslide that just happened, where all this is going, and so much more tomorrow. But today, uh, your story going nationwide, international, and Fox News making jokes about it. What do you say, Wayne Madsen? Well, I, I really, I don't believe that uh, comedians, especially failed comedians like Greg Gutfeld, belong on any news program. I mean, uh, I don't know what the what journalism has come to when this guy gets more airtime uh, than some journalists who are covering uh, important stories with the mainstream media. Um, so I, I discount uh, anything Gutfeld says. He, he's he's obviously a hack. Uh, that program uh, uh, with um, th those other Juan Williams, and I think I saw Carl Cameron there. And you know, Carl Cameron deserves a lot of credit himself. I don't know why he, I noticed he didn't have much to say in that clip, but Carl Cameron was the guy who un uncovered the story about the um, uh, Israelis. Israelis being arrested before 9 11 and uh, a four part series on Fox News. I wish they would stick to that kind of hard journalism and not uh, people like a you know some stand-up comic that obviously can't get booked at any comedy club so he's on fox news i was about to say he's like a jester in a little salacious crumb outfit hopping up and down like yeah conspiracy theory as you know that he classified in the 60s and again in the 80s the cia developed that term when anybody yeah. was on to something to just try to discredit it oh gutterfield or whatever his name is the, you know salacious crumb he, he he can say conspiracy theory boy he's an intellectual yeah yeah well you know that's true they did develop it to hit people who were questioning the 
the Warren report. But, you know, I never thought I would actually uh, support something in the Warren report. The photograph of Mr. X, who many people now and, and believe is uh, Rafael Cruz Sr., uh, was an exhibit in the Warren report. Uh, now there's a bunch of JFK researchers, and I kind of liken some of them to uh, uh, Trekkies, people that will, you know, argue over some character in Star Trek and say, no, no, Spock didn't die in episode 48. He, well, you no, know, the Ferengi males can mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, and they're just, you know, they're just like, that. some of these JFK researchers are just like Trekkies. You know, people are saying, well, the, the picture of Cruz, by the way, that picture purported to be Cruz's father was never identified. Uh, no, no one with the Warren report could identify him. Nor could Robert Blakey, who was the counsel for the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 78. Which and by the way, he the lived there. He was an anti-Castro yeah. guy. Yeah. And his son comes out of nowhere to be the top Bush minion. Yeah, even if you discount the photograph, you got to look at the fact that Rafael Cruz was associated with the oil services company Schlumberger. And the, heir, the owner of Schlumberger, the heir to Schlumberger, um, was Jean de Menil, who married Schlumberger's daughter. Jean de Menil was on the board of directors of Permindex, the company, the CIA front that was operated by Clay Shaw, who uh, Jim Garrison, the DA in, uh, in New Orleans, indicted. And, and these are the guys that were servicing the oil rigs that were the fronts for the invasions, yeah. drug running, you name it. This guy's right. got the pedigree provided, on every angle. Right, and provided the weapons for the Bay of Pigs invasion. Um, and... Um, uh, so, so we even if you discount the photo, you got to look at the interlocking relationship between Rafael Cruz and Clay Shaw, indicted uh, by Jim Garrison. You know, they they really went after Garrison, who was a DA. They tried to call him. They said he was crazy. He had been seeing a psychiatrist. They tried to say he was a child molester. The typical things you hear uh, when you know somebody stands up against uh, uh, the covert America. And it's always it's always been these covert operations run by the CIA. And and I, I, I was uh, told by a Republican insider, you know, Ted Cruz said he was going to take this thing all the way to Cleveland in the convention. And he, he, he abruptly drops out last night. I, I've been told that the uh, reason there were two reasons behind that. Uh, when Trump said he was going to spill the beans on Heidi Cruz, it really wasn't Heidi Cruz. He sort of misspoke. It was on Ted Cruz's extramarital affairs. And, and the second reason was that the, the CIA is very unhappy. They thought they had the JFK thing put to bed 53 years later. And this was resurrecting interest in that. By the and way, it, I've known you for yeah. like 20 years. You, you never exaggerate or make stuff up. You are very of great integrity. You're saying a good source inside what general area is telling you this? Uh, inside the Republican Party, inside the the. The hierarchy of the party. Well, they suddenly got real scared. He said even if he lost Indiana, he was going to go on for a while. They started changing his tune on that. That's right. And, and you know, and and so he was obviously tapped on the shoulder because Ted, uh, what I was told is Ted Cruz knows his father worked for the CIA. And there was there were more skeletons that were going to parade, be paraded out of that party had he not dropped out. So, he, you know, he was basically told it's time for you to leave the campaign. Wow, you're coming on tomorrow to talk about the campaign, the world. What are some of the stories we're going to cover when you're on for 45 minutes or an hour tomorrow, Wayne Manson? Well, this, this one with uh, the, the Rafael Cruz story, it, 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 there's so many, much more information coming out of, about that. And I, I think we're going to, uh, you know, in a way, uh, the way Donald Trump uh, worded his comment on Fox and Friends is that, can you believe that, he said, can you believe that, uh, Cruz's father was with Oswald before Oswald was shot. He didn't say anything about Oswald being the assassin. And I just wonder if uh, if we have a, a, a Trump presidency, uh, we'll we'll see a, a you know a, maybe the government. Will well, take I told you I've talked to yeah. high level insiders even before this happened. They were reaching out to me. I mean, Stone just showed up here. Going, hey, you know Trump's into you. You know Trump's awake. We got to... And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like he may be, like Fox says, the ultimate conspiracy theorist president. We'll talk to you, Wayne. You're awesome. WayneMansonReport.com. I'm Alex Jones. Joining us for the rest of the hour, uh, co-hosting with us is John Rappaport, NoMoreFakeNews.com. I'm not going to get into this investigative journalist or author, researcher. 
uh, but uh, he's worked as an investigator for some of the biggest uh, publications and TV stations and networks uh, out there. And he's just really a smart guy. We always like getting his commentary, not just here on my show, but uh, on the nightly news as well, no more fake news.com. A lot of his great books there on philosophy, uh, history, uh, research, the media, a very, very thought provoking fellow. I wanted to get him on about the general state of the world. Also an article he wrote about where TPP and the globalist takeover uh, is going right now. And just cover a smattering uh, of the waterfront uh, and of course take your calls. But John, wow. What do you make of Trump? I mean, I don't know what your answer is going to be, but clearly, re regardless of who he is, we're seeing a collapse of the credibility of the system uh, way beyond what you wrote about with my Piers Morgan uh, appearance. This just seems to be cascading. Where does it go from here, and what are the elite going to do to try to maintain control? Or do you disagree? There hasn't been a collapse. No, there's a collapse, all right, Alex, because of... What he's saying, you know, it's really simple. You can hate him. You can say he's a fake, he's a phony, he's this or that and so forth. But when the guy gets up and gives a foreign policy speech and says, uh, we need to end globalism, <laughs> for example, we need to cancel these trade treaties, these giant treaties that are sucking life and money and jobs out of America. Uh, he's talking common sense that the media have refused to discuss for 20, 30 years or more, and now there it is. So if you don't like the guy, if you hate him, look at the words, forget who's saying them. Look at the other side of the coin. I mean, really the other side of the coin. Who's the other guy who's talking about these trade deals and globalism all throughout the campaign? Bernie Sanders. Put together the voting block of Sanders plus Trump, because a lot of that voting block has to do with defeating globalism and canceling these trade treaties. Look at the size of that voting block versus the witch who's riding down the center stripe on her blood soaked hands, Hillary Clinton, who is a globalist to the core. And you realize the divide and conquer strategy here. I mean, it's unbelievable. Let's take uh, the people in the United States, all of whom know that this is a complete farce, a crime, a tragedy, uh, the destruction of the country as we move into the globalist framework for the world order of the future. Let's, let's just forget all about that, but let's divide and conquer these people. Let's put them on opposite sides where they're screaming at each other over the fence so that Hillary just rides down the middle and wins. Well, that's what's happening. That's, that's what's a great happen. point. Do you think Trump understands that at your gut level? Do you think the fix is in? No, I think he understands this very well. The question is, does Bernie Sanders understand it? And I think in his heart of hearts alone at night, he does. He's looking at Trump and scratching his head and saying, I hate this guy. He's everything that I don't want to be. He's everything that, w that shouldn't happen to America. But you know, I have to admit, on the issue of the trade treaties and globalism, I mean, we both know pretty much the same data, and we're on the same side. Yeah, if so Sanders has credibility, he's got to go with Trump, but he's not. He says he'll pledge to Hillary, who's gotten more corrupt Wall Street money, more dirty, crony capitalist war money than anybody ever in history. I mean, she is disgusting. But, but how epic is it, as you just said, John Rappaport of NoMoreFakeNews.com, that Trump's saying, cancel globalism, up with sovereignty, up with basic things. That is so anathema to the enemy. There's no way they can be behind him because he's bringing back nationalism and framing the debate. England's trying to get out of the EU. The narrative's changing. World government's in trouble. The plan isn't going according to plan. They're in trouble. Big trouble. You know, Obama has to go over there to England and say <laughs> to the, England, to the you know, Britain, UK, to the leaders, to the people, if you don't stay in the European Union, meaning globalism, because that's what it's all about, if you get out, you have to go to the back of the line to negotiate a separate trade treaty with the United States. Well, you know, that tells you who Obama is. And the UK well, should call that bluff in a minute, just like we should when the communist Chinese tell us what to do. Exactly. You know, you say, well, what, what are you talking about? You're talking about defeating 
everything that needs to be defeating and you're saying no we should join up with the insanity so please leave get out you have such a way of crystallizing the battlefront and what we're really seeing john rapaport stay there let's come back and go to calls cover other key news with john rapaport stay with us we're going right back to John Rappaport and your phone calls. We'll get the calls passed and continue with him. No more fake news.com. Just very briefly, I've gotten the authorization instead of saying today's the last day, the last day, because they kept saying stop it. I made a deal. I can offer 30 to 40 percent off. The food's freshly made, high quality, non GMO, uh, you know, storable foods. My Patriot Supply powers it. They're full spectrum of food, private labeled, the full selection, totally fresh, 30 to 40 percent off. Private labeled is InfoWarsLife.com. You can buy the exact same My Patriot that's excellent right next to it for more at InfoWarsStore.com. We sell both. But I'm contractually able to go 30, 40% off. They want us dependent. We have great water filtration systems that just cut out all the garbage. Uh, Pro Pure, Alexa Pure. Uh, we've got uh, the shower filters that have the fast flow that are four stage that just cut all the garbage out, the very best systems out there that are less than leading competitors that don't even take as much stuff out. In the case of the ProPure Promax, really great systems, all survival items, including all nutraceuticals, all shortwave radios, all non-GMO heirloom seeds are 10% off. Then 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. Then free shipping on orders of $50 or more. And it just goes on and on and on. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the uh, right to the storable foods. InfoWarsLife.com brings you right to the nutraceuticals. InfoWarsHealth.com brings you to the third-party uh, stuff from Longevity that's excellent. The highest discounts you're going to find are on that site. InfoWarsHealth.com. InfoWarsTeam.com is its sister site, and purchasing that there also helps under operations. So that's how we do this, not with taxpayer money like NBC and MSNBC and of course, uh, NPR, but with people buying high quality products. Mother's Day is here. If you order today, we can still get it to you by this weekend. Great gift, Secret 12 for your mom, uh, or a bottle of X2 or Oxy powder. Uh, amazing stuff in your purchase funds this operation. I'm gonna go to Lynn, uh, and I'm going to go to Mike here in a moment, Mike first and others. But after we take some of these calls, you can talk to these topics, obviously. John Rappaport, what is it you think is most important to cover today? Well, what we're covering here is the march of globalism. These impending trade treaties that empower mega corporations that are colluding with governments to steal and rob and uh, put people into poverty all over the world to lower energy production. That's one of their main goals. That's a mass they culling. That's how you create poverty. That's right. So that, to me, is the big one. And you've got an article that's excellent, BRICS and the Brexit countries, Secrets of the Crip. We're going to cover that after a few calls. But, folks, when they double our power prices the last eight years on average, shutting down over 1,000 plants, that is devastating. A poor person now loses maybe 20% more of their paycheck. This is how, and you do it in places like Africa, it causes a revolution when food prices go up to 50% of your, 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 your paycheck. This is how they foment this by design. Uh, thank you for holding. Let's go ahead now, and let's go to Mike in Illinois. You're on the air with John Rappaport. Go ahead. Uh, this is Mike in Illinois. I, I just want to say in a couple months I'll be 65, getting, heading into the last part of my life, but I want to just turn the clock back a little bit, 46 years to 1970. At that time, I was a 19-year-old college student, and I used to listen to a radio host called Sherman Skolnick. And he talked about a book called Farewell America. And at that time, I had to mail away for that book because that was not allowed to be published in the United States of America. I probably had Sherman Skolnick on 50 times, died four or five years ago. Great guy, incredible anti-corruption researcher. He would say stuff I couldn't believe. I'd have him on 20 years ago and he'd go, most of the media is paid. They pay for the news stories, you see, big corporations. And I knew they put their people in, but then later it came out. A really smart guy. Very smart guy, and lo and behold, what we're talking about today, globalist, 45 years ago, another word for it was a commission. And who was a commission? CIA, FBI, Big Oil at the time, British Secret Service, corporations, and mafia. And what worries me about this is that who was the man in office at the time that played ball with them? You got it, JFK. And what happened to him? He double-crossed them, and what happened to him? He got eliminated. 
Yeah, he wanted and to keep cutting taxes, and he decided in the Vietnam War, he said, but cutting taxes gives us more money. It makes people wealthy. More money comes in. They said, look, just shut up and die. How's that? Uh, amazing points. Anything else, Mike? After that, their man got in, LBJ, the Great Society, to me was the great flop. And they ended and the family, they started ending the family, great point. John, how profound is it that they're so arrogant now, they tell us, the TPP's written, it merges all these unions together, it's it's above the law, we get copies finally, they pass it, just totally draconian, but still, nothing is, 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 is really being said about it in mainstream media, but meanwhile, they get arrogant and say, hey, we don't even have to uh, have elections anymore. Those never counted. We just appoint the people now. But that backfired. That didn't work. It shows they can only go so, uh, too, so far. And I think they've tried to go too far, and it's really backfiring. Uh, your comment on what he was saying and on that uh, police misreport. Absolutely. As he says, it's been going on for a very long time. The first great trade treaty gap after the Second World War they started negotiating that in 1945. So this goes back a long way, the plan. And the plan is to empower these mega corporations to decide the law for whatever country they're in. I mean, people have to understand it. These trade treaties, as they're called, TPP, TTIP. This is all about saying, look, the judicial system of countries is extinct. We don't need this anymore. What we're going to have instead is corporate tribunals. And this is all about a corporation saying, look, we've got all this stuff that we want to sell all over the world. And we don't care whether you think it's toxic, destructive, you know, pesticides and toxic medical drugs, GMOs, uh, tainted food, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to sell it. And if any country refuses it, then we're going to sue that That's right. government in a corporate tribunal the judicial system of that country will have nothing to say about it. And hey, listen, there's an interesting story today. The NFL has told their players not to eat meat from Mexico. But citizens can. They're shipping yeah. it in record right. numbers full of steroids and drugs. That That's a powerful article. That's in the LA Times and others. Talk about it. Yeah, because the players could test positive for steroid use and be suspended. So it's like saying, well, we don't know what's in the food, but we know that some of the food coming from Mexico has got this stuff in it. And if you, an NFL star, eat this meat, then you could test positive for steroids. But, but it's okay for your kids. It's okay for your kids. Kids, everybody else, it's fine, whatever. And the reason I bring this up is because in these trade deals, what's happening is people will not be able to know what country their food is coming Just from. Just like we can't know GMO thing. labeling here, and, and, and let's expand. That's one small part of it, but key, they're also diplomatically and corporately immune, and they can also use the regulations to shut down domestic operators. It's a monopoly takeover system. Absolutely. They can say, this is the food for planet Earth. Deal with it. You can't resist it because we have these tribunals that will overcome any system you now have. So it turns to the people to revolt against this completely, just the way they're now revolting against the political system. And it's I was about happening. to say, it's a microcosm, as above, so below, that they would try to go, hey, we have superdelegates that decide now. That's the way it is. Go and shut. People said, wait, we vote. You're, you, uh, so see, it's backfiring. That's the good news. As long as we resist. Look at the Brexit. How exciting is that for you? Fantastic. You know, the uh, nobody in England who isn't a globalist wants to stay in the European Union. The whole idea is England would leave the European Union and say, gee, guess what? Uh, we're a country. Uh, we forgot about that. We're our own country. We can protect ourselves. Yeah, we don't need the bureaucrats to make 91% of our laws and open our borders right. and, 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 and tell us we can't fly the, the stars and, and, and bars because it's racist or stars and stripes. Or, I mean, it's just crazy. Completely crazy. So I'm just hoping that this movement gains a lot more steam because there are a lot of people in the U.S., I can tell your listeners in, in England, who are rooting for you to get out of the European Union completely because this will start sure. a domino effect. Absolutely. They're saying that it's already happening. And here's the good news. Thomas Jefferson said the level of tyranny you will live under is the exact amount you put up with. It's equilibrium, folks. It's, it's, if you put up with tyranny... It'll just push and push and push till the execs are in your house saying, you know, let me have sex with your wife, like like rollerball. 
You know, we own you. You've got to stand up for yourself. A nation of sheep will be ruled by wolves. John, I want to go back to calls, but uh, getting more into this article, I don't want to be too positive about this, but it, it's a paradox. There's like all these brain dead zombies on the left and right, and all these foreign funded groups that are here, and all this balkanization getting dumber and dumber, but there is a large group of people of every race, color, and creed getting more and more enlightened. It, 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 it seems like a paradox. What would you call this, or do you agree or disagree? I agree, and and just as you indicated there with the twist, you know, some people are falling further asleep, but a lot more people are waking up. They're just sick and tired of all the lies from every direction, you know, and people are beginning to connect the dots on these lies and realize, we just had a study that was, uh, published out of Johns Hopkins, Washington Post, uh, today, yesterday, 250,000 deaths a year in the U.S. caused by medical errors. Third leading cause of death in the U.S. 10% of all people who die in the U.S. are dying from medical errors. And here's these prop job, phony experts, medical experts, representing that system saying, Vaccines are completely safe and effective, and anyone who tells you any different is a lunatic. That's the foundation these criminals are standing on. Some people are waking up from that direction. Other people are waking up to the whole superdelegate insanity and the theft of government. Other people are waking up to Brexit. Other people are waking up to, uh, you know, we want to take everybody's guns, especially the people who don't shoot other people. You know, so from all directions, people are waking up and they are resisting. Meanwhile, though, the tyranny is intensifying. Colorado, especially a beautiful state, great people, but it's this fake liberal tyranny gets such cover. A woman, I, I was in the local news, we had an article, talked about chemtrails and geoengineering, which is partially declassified. It's all over TV and movies. It's super hot topic. Prince was talking about it, everybody. Uh, Merle Haggard. Uh, Chuck Norris came out and exposed it and linked to all of it in World Net Daily. She had her child taken, and the judge said, because she believes in a dangerous fringe subculture, danger to her daughter, close quote. I mean, e even if she was wrong, she should be allowed to believe something's going on if she's not hurting her daughter. But believing it, her daughter's been taken, and now Colorado wants to start basically forced inoculations. Yeah, they want to register everybody who's not vaccinated in that state. Complete insanity. And they're going to have a major revolt on their hands, I can tell you that. And this story about the mother and her child is spreading like wildfire because people are seeing the complete insanity of it. The government, stay out. It's not your business what I tell my child. They admit there's a secret program spraying us. It's on the Discovery Channel. Right. But as you say, regardless of whether it's true or not, here's a mother saying X, Y, Z to her child, and suddenly government agents show up because a parent says something to her child. There are millions of people waking up on that score in this country because as we've all been documenting, you know, people grow vegetables in their yard and suddenly they can't have a garden. They fly a flag, that's not okay. A kid comes to school with a screensaver, with a gun on it, and all of a sudden he's a criminal. This is the government just saying, we're taking over. That's it. We have the bureaucrats. We're going to do whatever we want. People are not going to stand for it. They but it's also not. another paradigm. I've noticed the military and the police, there are really some bad cops out there and bullies, obviously, is from the general public. But I'm not lionizing. I've just found the military and police are some of the most awake groups now, and they're saying, stop the people above us. We don't like this. Yeah, you bet. Now, that's going to cause some major disruptions, believe me, because after all, the government relies on force. That's what it is. That's what George Washington basically said. Central government is coercion. It's not eloquence. It's, it's, it's force. Exactly. So who are these government leaders depending upon? Force, cops, soldiers. If cops and soldiers are waking up and saying, no, no, we're not going to do this. This is not our job. This is the government pretending that they have this power that they don't have. The whole thing is going to change and collapse. So bottom line, we're entering a time of total change, of total upheaval for good and bad. And I think we've just entered the edge of an accelerated time. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. And then B, how long do you think this time of change is going to be? I see it now in human development basically never stopping. I think we're hitting the beginning of the human species. I mean, I think... And, of course, we began before that, but, I mean, I think we're about to enter an entire new paradigm. 
Absolutely. We're just at the beginning and there's no end to it. There, it's not like, okay, well, in 10 years, the whole thing is going to be walked back and, and we're all going to conform. No, it's never going to happen. This is just going to spread and spread and spread. And that's why the elite in their own writings are freaking out. They want to control the destiny of the species and steal it. And there is a race consciousness to all humans. It's, it's really a group collective mind. It's been proven scientifically. And it wants to thrive and go to the stars. And it's saying no. And I think the elite should just get out of the way. Well, that's the lesson. They're going to make their decision. But regardless of what they say, they're going to be swept aside. That's it. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're absolutely right. God, I love humanity. Let's go ahead. John Rapport's our guest. Uh, let's talk to uh, Lee in California or Lynn in California. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. I wanted what? to talk real quick about Donald Trump. They mentioned today that he was going to do a vice presidential selection. And I was just going to basically advise that Donald Trump not select any vice presidential candidate who is from the establishment or current pol politician. Uh, back when uh, JFK was the president, uh, they popped him and killed him because they had their establishment candidate, uh, LBJ, in the wings. LBJ escalated the war in Vietnam. Es uh, 58,000 men died through the, Vulc the Gulf of Tonkin lies. Uh, I I'm really concerned that he needs to be very careful about his selection of a vice presidential candidate and don't defer that off to some politicians that ran against him or something. Uh, Bobby Kennedy, they turned right around and killed him immediately after they killed JLBJ because, yeah, J uh, J I mean, J F K because they knew what he was up to because he'd been side by no, side. He told people they brother. killed my brother and I'm going to get him. You bet. You bet. So what, what we, they'll tolerate Trump, though, if they don't have a back door. They've been working for 100 years to get here, just like Mao said, three steps forward, two steps back. They'll take a couple of steps back for a few years to renew their efforts against America. So we need to be aware of that. And Trump needs to be especially aware of who he selects as a vice presidential candidate. I, I agree. And, and, and stay there, Lynn. I want, you've been holding a while, and I want you to be able to add some more points. But... How do you think they'll come at Trump, Rappaport? Because I want your deep perspective on this. They'll try to co-opt, obviously. We already met with Haas, and then Haas attacked him afterwards because Trump rebuffed him. Uh, continuing, he, he said, we got nuclear weapons. We don't have to be on the K Korean Peninsula. I mean, South Korea will nuke them. They got nukes, too. Uh, I mean, Trump really has got a lot of good old generals that are advising him that just are explaining this is all a big boondoggle to rip us off. And he's smart enough to say, hey, big military, so the public then still feels secure and everything. But the truth is, we have mutually assured destruction. He wants to actually control our borders and things. But they're going to try to co-opt him, try to demonize him, try to dig up uh, made-up scandals or whatever, try to steal the election. But I really think the momentum is behind him when he goes after Hillary. And she's a witch who's got people behind her that are used to power. Rappaport, I'm worried they really might try to kill him. I think we should be talking about what happens if they do kill Trump. No question about it. You know, that's the, quote, final solution, if they can't do it any other way. I completely agree with the caller, by the way, on vice presidential selection. Don't pick a politician. Do not do that. You can surround yourself with all the advisors you want who know about the Senate and the House and this and that and all of the, you know, corruption, basically, the way things are. But don't put somebody on the ticket who is just another politician. Do the same thing that you've been doing, in other words. You're taking a radical stance, well, pick somebody who is in line with that. That's going to be just as much of an energizing force as you are. Don't go to the Senate, don't go to the House, don't go to the governors, forget all that. And by the now way, you're absolutely right. Insiders that are into corruption always go, he won't know how to run it. You guys have been running into the ground. He does know how it's run. He used to buy and sell you legally. He says, it's a bad system. I don't like it. I want to fix it. And he's not going to fix it overnight. He wants to just dial it back, make some better deals, bring in good immigrants we need, not bring in criminals and child molesters, and do a few things like that. But see, you guys want to shut the republic down because we've already built your world government. Trump knows we've reached that final phase of betraying America. He's swooping in like the Duke, the, the, the Dusex at the end 
to grab victory from the jaws of defeat, in my view. But all I know is he's not our only hope. We're taking action. Populism is the answer. Uh, awakening is the answer. Lynn, other points. Well, I was going to say that I think that it, we should all be concerned. Trump is one man. He will have the legal position to do a lot of things. But we had five and a half million people disenfranchised in Colorado and little or no complaint by the people. Two and a half million of those people participated in the legality of marijuana. This doesn't speak very well for our republic at this point. Trump cannot do it all alone. We will have to be there to help him. We'll have to be involved, and we will have to enable things. You know, I almost want to take some of these callers, get their name, and have like days where they come on as guests each hour, like a few times a week, like Lynn and the guy from Australia. They're so much better to listen to than I am, and so much better at crystallizing what they've said. In fact, Lynn, send us your email to Rob Dew, Rob D at Infowars.com, just Rob and the letter D. Uh, as a, a guest idea, kind of the knowledge of the people, the knowledge of the crowd. And I want to start a segment every week at least for an hour to have four or five of these men and women on, Lynn from California, the other fellow from Australia, because I tell you, the knowledge of the average people out there completely trumps the establishment, John. Absolutely. And to take this point further, let's assume, okay, people think Trump is crazy, he's not real or whatever, but Imagine that he might be, let's say he is, and let's say by some circumstance he's in the White House. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. Because of the way things work, because of the corruption, every time that he or somebody like him would try to make a move to solve a problem for real, there's going to be such tremendous force arrayed against him and insanity that he has only one option to go back to the people immediately. This is what populism 21st century style is gonna be like. On networks, on the web, however he has to do it, and say to the people, my fellow Americans, here's what I tried to do today. That's right, that's I the key, that's walk, the key. Day one, when they block the him, go, sh I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Day one. Day one, yeah. exactly. They tried to, I tried to walk back this treaty and here's exactly what happened. Here are the men's names who tried to stop me. This is what they're doing right now. The people will tear them apart. Happened. Exactly. You've got to go back to the people three times a week, whatever it takes. Otherwise, the whole thing falls apart. If you're a real populist, that's what you do in the 21st century. You're on the web. Hello, everybody all over the world. This is how the forces of evil tried to stop me and what you want today. Chapter and verse. Yeah, what you said people. is such genius. That's why I was just sputtering and interrupting. It's so genius. You're right. I think Trump knows that. He has to day one. He's been exposing the dirty tricks. We've been doing as well, right along with the people, the citizen journalists. And he just needs to be totally transparent with, this is what I wanted to do. It's what I tried to do. They're doing this to me now. Look what they're doing. And the people justly will politically and economically tear these occupiers, these collaborators, these traitors, these Vichy French apart. Absolutely. Absolutely will. The people all over the United States who don't have a job because of these trade treaties and Trump says to them, I'm trying to get you a job now. But here are the people that are stopping me right now. Here are the people inside the White House that I didn't even know about. Here are the senators. Sure. Here are the congressmen. These are their names. This is what well, let me doing. throw this out. I'm for drug decriminalization, but it doesn't mean I buy the whole drug culture. The marijuana culture that's totally into being zombies and the weed's so strong and everything. Soros is funding that. Colorado, the last caller made a great point. They want us so bombed out of our brains. Two million people go vote to make marijuana legal. But where are the people mad in Colorado? The thousands are mad. Where are the people mad about having their vote canceled? People got to start getting angry, John. About the right things. Absolutely, Alex. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, the whole pot culture thinks it's like magic and it's the answer to everything. Look, you, you got a right to hurt yourself if you want to. Marijuana does have some medical reasons. I get it. I'm not for the drug war. But because I'm against the drug war doesn't mean I think you should be shooting heroin down your veins. I mean, look, if George Soros wants you stoned, it's a reason. So he can rob the living daylights out of you. Back in 70 seconds, five more minutes of Rappaport, more calls than the big champagne celebration, Infowars.com forward slash show. And I'm not celebrating just the win for Trump. It's the collapse of the globalist hoax. Their fraud is coming down. Now, what's on the other side? Not sure.
I got questions on the board like, if Trump flip-flops on this, what's our plan? David, Michigan, I got support Trump and holding him accountable. I got callers you know, asking that question over and over again. I want to go to some of those right now. John Rappaport's our guest. No more fake news .com. Always great to have him co-hosting with us with all his great points and commentary. I said I want to pop champagne bottles for the victory of people waking up. I only done this six years ago once when the whole world government Copenhagen Treaty came out. The secret emails, how it's all a fraud. Now it's meant to depopulate us came out. That devastated them. This is bigger. All over the world, there's a populist awakening. And people say, what are we going to do? If Trump ends up to be a fraud, which I don't think he is, or gets outmaneuvered, it's the resistance and the awakening that's unstoppable. If we're aware of this anti-human movement and we start resisting it and voting with our dollars and our actions, and as the culture grows of resistance, it's over. John? Yeah. I mean, look, okay, let's suppose Trump gets in the White House and he's a total fake. Total fake. Never meant anything he said at we all. We destroy him. You bet. Now, that's a lesson to be learned as well. What do you think is going to happen when politicians realize, gee, these people weren't just worshiping Donald Trump. They wanted these ideas to come true. And if he's not going to do it, they're going to hold his feet to the fire and destroy him. Wow, that means that they're actually awake. <laughs> it's like V for Vendetta when he the says, move, listen, yeah, you may have got my flesh continues. and blood, but ideas are bulletproof, baby. I win. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. They think they're going to sit there and they think they're going to play games, John, and they think that it's all about Trump. No, it's about nationalism, common sense, the human family and what works. Great point. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take another call here. Let's talk to uh, Mike in Texas. You're on the air with John Rappaport. Go ahead. Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm giving a standing ovation here in my office I, to you, to the callers today, to every guest you have. I am so energized. It's, it's unbelievable. And it seems like everything is just razor sharp and focused and just searing. That's the first thing. I'm a Trump supporter, but like you cautiously, and I was applauding when I heard your opening statement kind of to Donald Trump today saying, listen, this is why we're behind you. Don't let us down, et cetera. And to everyone that's standing up and getting awake, and, and Donald Trump has basically provided the cover for people who, like myself, have been preaching the truth and have been... That's it. It's only a focal point, like Ron Paul used to say about himself, but, but this is 50 times bigger. I agree. It, it's not the cult of personality because that's what we've been trained to follow. And this is bigger than that. And you're seeing it manifest and grow and grow and get more and more steam because people are more acute and on point with what they're saying. He's awakened those who needed the cover, who were beaten down. I was beaten down. I, could, I was exhausted. I couldn't get through to anybody and almost basically gave up. So now we have to say to Donald Trump, look, you've awakened the true freedom lovers, the true people with integrity. The true people that love their family, love freedom, want property rights, want freedom for everyone, not this fake victimization crap. Sorry, that's that's going no, on. No, it is. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. The West is liberal. We're the people, women power, and everybody getting power and freedom and money and and and, and, and your own choice and do what you want. Don't tell us we're attacking people. Hundred percent agree. So to Donald Trump and to everybody out there, do not give up. Pop the champagne. Have a beer. Hug your kids. We've just begun. I am so unbelievably energized. But we have to take these little celebrations to keep the momentum going. And to Donald Trump, like Rappaport just said and you just said, you know now that you've awakened the people that know the truth. And we're amassing now, and we're being diligent and diplomatic and proceeding. And if you betray us, you'll be like Judas Iscariot. We won't have to go after you. You'll go after yourself. Thank you. Great point, Mike. I got to jump. Another incredible caller. And, and in such a wake, people, John, come back for another full hour with us soon when I'm not so excited and out of control to really map out this more. Come back in a, next week. Come on for an hour with us. No more fake news .com. We salute you, brother. Incredible points today. What should we call this last 45 minute interview? What, what should the name of this be? The truth revealed. Yeah, well, it certainly is revealed, but I tell you, I don't know. Hey, well, I'm going to come back. Thank you so much, John Rappaport. I'm going to come back with some of the crew and David Knight in the other studio. Stay with us. It was back in 2009, 2010, uh, six years ago.
that uh, they had the big UN Global Summit, world government, carbon taxes, and then the documents got leaked. The Russians hacked in at the same time. Uh, and, and at the East Anglia in the UK and, and, and had the master professor file where they were commanding all the other universities to, quote, hide the decline. And I said, go get a bottle of champagne. We're going to have a celebration because I knew that was going to devastate them. Well, Donald Trump, whether he's good or bad, overriding the globalists, the people overriding it, uh, globalism being put front and center is a bad thing. All their media lies, the Republicans saying votes don't count, all their con artist behavior, it blew up in their face. Now, does that mean Trump's going to save us? No, but the people are waking up. So I am going to, Joe Jennings, come on over here with us, brother. So I'm going to shoot the cork over there, like I told you earlier. Um, th this is just a small part of our great crew in here right now, some of the nighttime folks, some of the reporters. Anybody can spread out, too, come over here with me if you want. I just want to say great job to everybody. This was I just thought of this like an hour ago. They ran out and got some stuff. Uh, but we need to signify this is a big victory. I mean, uh, and, and also talk to some of the folks. We have that mobile mic. See if they think it is a big victory. But it's an excuse to drink champagne on air, so why not do it? Uh, I know Jakari's got his lemonade over there. That's good. So do I. So, folks, this is a big deal. Make no mistake. Wow, that came out really easy. Uh, so there you go, gentlemen. All right. Ladies, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can actually hit the camera this time. Yeah. Well, I don't want to hit Nico over there. Nico, okay. Nico says go for it. I'll, I'll watch Nico's break, fast. Watch break the camera. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good job, folks. All right. And we're not we're not sloshing in here. Just two bottles of champagne for like 25 people. So it's kind of like in the old days. They actually had wine, I guess, at uh, communion. You actually got a little thimble of wine. I've been to a few shirts where they actually have that. And then later it actually becomes a, uh, later it actually becomes a grapefruit juice, Welch's grapefruit juice. And, and who picked this out? This rosé. Me. We good job, Biggs. Biggs. Uh, Tastes pretty good. I don't drink much, but you know, when I do. <laughs> I know. I don't drink much. I don't drink beer much, but when I do, it's Dos Equis. Seriously, though, uh, dude, what do you make of this? I mean, is it a big victory? I definitely think it's a victory for people who are sick and tired of the system uh, the way it is now, and the people have spoken, and um, they're, they're just done with the uh, political process the way it is, and they want to give somebody a chance. And who Donald is Trump not, and his wife and daughter are here right now, right behind there us. There they are. And he, here's he, Donald Trump. He hasn't been uh, selected by special interests. Donald or Trump's here with us. The he GOP. Can, so he I took a vaccine a and he's paralyzed right now. But let's <laughs> let's see if we can talk, Donald. <laughs> it's a huge victory. Huge. 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 They got a huge victory out. So anyway, let's uh, let's toast to uh, to liberty and um, let's toast to overriding the mainstream media and their fraud it. collapsing. I'll drink to that. Right. Absolutely. I tell fact, you, all the arrogant media people. We should media play that people. clip. We played a clip last night at the end of the nightly news. See if y'all can cue that up. It's called uh, Donald Cuck's Wolf. He's on the Wolf Blitzer show, and Wolf asked him about a month and a half ago why he keeps attacking Megyn Kelly, and he has this epic response. It's epic. Like, it's 22 seconds long. It's epic. If you guys can pull it up, just pl huge. run it. Yeah. It's huge. I tell you, uh, folks, what else do you make of this? Because... These arrogant people get on TV, Democrats and Republicans, and go, look, we never count your votes. You're conspiracy theorists, but now they're having to back off. It just shows these con men can only go so far. That's right. And I think this election is going to surprise a lot of people because I don't think Hillary Clinton stands a, a chance in, uh, in hell at this point. She's going to be done. The scandals are coming out. And it's just a matter of time. Go ahead, kid. Yeah, I think what this election really reveals is the fact that a lot of big government uh, liberals are kind of breaking away from globalists. What we had like uh, last year, you saw all the liberals kind of speaking out against the TPP, which, of course, was a globalist program. But now you see a lot of the liberals that are kind of warming up to Trump. And now the biggest opposition to Trump is just these cult-like social justice warriors. And then you saw with the Colorado, with people are upset about the uh, voter voterless election. Like and then, then you see, you know, with the whole Bernie Sanders crowd that are flocking to Bernie instead of Clinton, and the fact that Clinton's completely uh, unpopular on college campuses now. Well, it's really all just populism. You know, he doesn't want that yeah, New York exactly. Times thing released, whether he was manipulating them or us or whatever. He's like, don't worry, I'm just saying all this border stuff to get the right-wing crazies to love me. Now, I don't know if he actually said that or not, but that would be hurtful if he did. But he seems like a straight shooter out in the open. The point is, it's not crazy to have a border. Everybody else does. And the Border Patrol Union endorsed him, so they obviously don't think it's just uh Well, you know, all words, I know is, play. if he was really a shill, they'd be going for him. They're scared of him. So let me ask this question. I think they're legitimately scared. So, A, are they legitimately scared of him? A, and if that's true, B, why are they so scared of Trump? Because he, he can't be bought. He He's not in the back pocket of these people, and that's what scares them the most. And I don't even think it's him as a person. They're just scared that they don't have control 
over him, and they like having control. They I like, like Donald Trump because sides. he is a ridiculous goofball. And, 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 and by the way, I am too. I'm not sitting there going, hey, look, he's a goofball. I mean, he's really a character. Uh, McBrain, what do you think of this whole situation? Well, another thing about Trump, you got to think about the issues. I think they're afraid of the issues. He's going to release the 28 pages. He's going to audit the Fed. He's he wants gonna, to arrest he's, Hillary. He's, he's, he wants to arrest Hillary. Yeah, Isn't absolutely. it great to have a candidate saying, I want to arrest my competition? All right, Jones, they have that clip ready. Throw to that clip. Oh, you got to see this. Here, here he is on Megyn Kelly with the uh, uh, Wolf Blitzer. Epic. Wolf Blitzer, yeah. Epic. Why do you keep attacking Megyn Kelly of Fox? Because every night on her show, she does negative hits on me. Every single night. And frankly, if she didn't, her ratings would drop down far lower than yours. <laughs> I love that's all that clip. Far lower than yours. <laughs> He's just can't help it. I mean, one of the interesting, one of the interesting things that you see all the time is the fact that you see all these polls where they say everyone hates Trump. But why is it that almost everyone is showing up to his events in mass numbers? There's more people. That's that show why up Cruz to his really gave up, but because no one was showing up to his things. What about Glenn Beck? What a weirdo! But look at these polls, though. I was getting on Rasmussen. You got to pay a monthly subscription to even do the poll. So who's actually going to these sites, paying for that subscription to go take these polls? I've, it's few, far, and beyond. People that are actually going to oh, go yeah, out there. I mean, I mean Bernie gets 50000 Hillary gets 500 It's all BS, man. Yeah, Let's ridiculous. get Jakari's take on this. Jakari loves reporting on Trump. He has to full-time be on Trump. <laughs> yeah, uh, working here at uh, the I'm Trump, sarcastic. Trump Nightly News. Um, <laughs> well, like you said earlier, I think it is a victory for people to see that the mainstream media does not control the narrative, as we saw going back further in the election cycle when you had guys like Trump and Rand Paul step off the debate stage, hold their own debates, their own press conferences, and all the good publicity they got from that. So I think just going forward, if nothing else, this is a victory for people to see that alternative means can work and you don't have to be a slave to the mainstream media. I agree. To me, it's like a thermometer that's stuck in a turkey. That's what, I mean, that's what Trump is. He's just a gauge that they threw everything they got at him and it backfires. Jakari, what does that say to you about the future of the media? I mean, if mainstream media has a 6% trustability rating with the Associated Press, that's a real national poll. Mm -hmm. That there's not much further to fall there. I mean, you know. Well, they have the big bucks that they can keep pumping into the system to get people to believe it. But, you know, as the uh, millennial generation, the younger people come up, uh, less and less they're going to these mainstream news sites. They get their news from Twitter and Facebook and all these other sources. The memes, you know, that brings a lot of information into it. I'll say that. News grabbing the mic away. A lot of um, we need more mics. We, we, a lot we, of the people at that protest in SoCal knew who InfoWars was, even the protesters. They, the, oh, InfoWars is here. Awesome. They knew who we were. I don't know if they you don't knew. normally say they know who InfoWars was. You are eating while you're on there. Right. <laughs> that's I'm true. I'm just joking. But but that's how that's how big the, <laughs> that far reaching we are. And then what do we have? We had the mainstream media grabbing our clips, playing them on their shows the next day. Which by I the way, all lot. of our reporters and crew are awesome. But our news director Rob Do and folks, you have been out there. Your wife's been so nice. You've been gone almost every week for months. You're the you're the folks that have been out there uh, getting the amazing amazing footage of the social justice warriors. I mean, how would you describe it? I don't care what color they are, where they're from, East Coast, West Coast. These people look like they've been put in a microwave oven. I mean, they seem like idiots. They they repeat the same talking points over and over again. They've been conditioned to uh, say, I think, what they're saying by whatever media outlet they're following, whether it's, you know, Huffington Post or, you know, Rachel Maddow or Salon.com, those places that hate Trump, they can't stand him, so they're looking for any reason to uh, attack him. And so they just say, well, he's a racist, and that talking point is just memed through from these people Portland, right exactly from yeah yeah same thing. yeah i mean we've traveled you know east coast west coast it's the, the same the people that don't like trump but the people that do like trump like him for a variety of reasons well regardless. mainly and mainly those people are business people who own small businesses are working and pay taxes and they understand how the system works That's right but this a is a referendum on the don't. system Forget exactly yeah uh, marla you want to make some points there you yeah. go I think it is interesting that people are always looking for easily digestible tidbits, especially when it comes to the media, and it doesn't help that that's what we're given day in and day out. So it sure. just it makes people's minds just kind of shrink and shrink to where they just don't know how to think for themselves anymore. So it's nice to have someone who is confident and is not afraid to back down when they're questioned about things, you know, pushing that forward out in the media. Well, that's right. 14, 15 months ago when he first announced all the so-called liberals, which are just fake pseudo-intellectuals, a lot of conservatives are like that too, we're just laughing. Oh, they're destroyed. It's so goofy. Oh, they're not laughing now. No. And, and and then Hillary's stealing this from Bernie Sanders. I wonder how they feel about this now. You know, Jones, we talked about this last night, how um, Bernie 
is going to have less delegates than Hillary after winning the state of Indiana because of the superdelegates. And so we talked about that last night. That's how it's going to happen. Now it looks like she's only like seven down, but with nine superdelegates, she could actually take the lead in delegates even though she lost the state. Yep. Well, that's how it works. You lose and you win. What you're being I think the big thing this is for the past 6,000 years, the world's elites have been using various strategies to control the population. And now we see Trump that's kind of breaking up these strategies, kind of letting, letting the genie out of the bottle and letting us know what the power structure really does to control us. And so now, I mean, Trump's not a libertarian, but he's at least paving the door, paving the way, I mean, for more libertarian candidates to rise up. So maybe 100 years from now, we'll have a, a very libertarian president in the White House, if we even still have a White House. Yeah, a lot of libertarians are supporting him, myself included. And, uh, you know, they say the illiterate in the 21st century aren't going to be people who cannot read or write. They're going to be people who cannot unlearn all the lies they've been told all these years. Well, that's a great know? point. That is. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it is an amazing time. I'm going to skip this network break. I've just been doing this because uh, this it's so much fun to do. I want to bring David Knight in here for a moment. David Knight is in the Situation Room. We're in the War Room. And we're going to keep going we at the bottom of the hour. The turn the things over to him. Because I kept calling it Studio B last night. We need to come up with, is it the 80s disco room? Or what are we going to call uh, it? Let's be serious. This is know. the war room. Yeah. That's the situation room. You know, I think we should just say, let's, we should call this the TV studio. That should be the radio booth, but, but it's still TV. Right. And then that should be the newsroom. The newsroom. Or set it up in here as a newsroom. We got all these crew in here yeah. and have a camera. There where somebody stands up or at a desk. I mean, we'll come up with that. We got a lot of stuff going on. The, the point is we have three working studios now, and we could do, we could literally go 24 hours a day with rotating people with just the people we have now. <laughs> I mean, we don't yeah. want to do that every day, but we could <laughs> if something if something happens. We could do that. Definitely we could go live. If we drink 20 around. Diet Cokes a day <laughs> until we die. Yeah. No, we, but we got to get some more folks training hard. You're exactly. absolutely right. Yeah. And that's why it's important to support InfoWarsStore.com, all the great products, 30 to 40% off running for a few more days, or I guess until Monday or so on the high-quality, horrible foods. And we've got all the nutraceuticals and, and, and so much more. I see a lot of T-shirts out there. Hillary for prison T-shirts, very exciting. And, and InfoWars T-shirts. People are out there. You know, I saw a guy with the Hitler uh, Stalin Mao shirt, and people were yelling at him that he had Hitler on his shirt. They were calling him a racist. He goes, "Read the shirt." He's like, "Read well, the well, shirt." They didn't get it. Yeah, Hitler, they didn't get it. Hitler, These guys Stalin, are for gun Mao control. all agree gun control works. Exactly. They, they couldn't understand yeah, that. That's a classic. It's got the electrolytes plants crave. <laughs> it does, and that's I what I never seen no water come out of no toilet. You want to make him president? But just those, all those people out there that I met my, my on these travels of, that are like InfoWars fans, they saw the, <laughs> they saw the mic flag and they go, InfoWars, InfoWars. They were so happy to see us out there and that, you know, we were out there and, and this is the biggest thing. They go, you guys aren't concentrating on the protesters. You're talking to us. And that's what they really like, that we were just asking hey, what their opinion this, was. you know this Trump mask, all the ones I've seen are real stupid to make him look dumb. I mean, that looks like some kind of like evil chipmunk or something. He's got the mouth open, definitely. And we bought that from a, a, a pro, a pro so Trump guy. And the uh, Trump charging into battle. Say, that's it. Uh, say brains. You brains. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> looks like he's about to rob a bank. Absolutely. Hey, uh, let's bring in David Knight here. David, right. you've been listening to all of this. You should come in here, or, or we should bring David Knight here. Do we have an extra glass? Yeah, we yeah. definitely. That's okay, have one Alex. I'm, I'm drinking. Wake Someone up bring America David here because champagne. oh, good. I know you don't drink either, like Jakari, which is good. I don't <laughs> that's either. Right. We'll bring so some that, ginger uh, brew. Like Pinocchio now starts growing. Yeah. I'm on air, so I'm doing Wake Up America. Coffee. Good. At InfoWarsStore.com. <laughs> That's right. Said. Seriously, though, David, what do you make of our uh, points in here? Well, you know, Alex, I was listening to you talk to John Rappaport, and we've got a four-step process here. And John was talking about how, uh, you know, once we get, uh, we've, we've gotten the first step here, we've gotten uh, Trump nominated, we need to get him elected. Then we need to be his accountability partner, as some of the callers were saying. We need to support him and hold him accountable on this. And as John Rappaport was saying when you were talking to him, we've seen that the GOP has gone off the rails. We've elected them to take care of very specific problems. They're arrogant, and they insane crazies it. that say popular vote doesn't count with a straight right. face, smiling like, you know what, eating cats. That's right. So so we have to uh, we have to get them to understand that just as we're, we've rejected them, and I hope Trump understands this, we're going to hold him accountable. We'll support him in the things that we want him to do that he's campaigned on, and that's these globalist issues here. But And if he does that, I think that's going to create a template that will turn into a movement. Worldwide. And exactly. And we're already seeing, they just had details leaked, Alex, of the TTIP, the Transatlantic Partnership. They just had details leaked the last couple of days. People in Europe are furious about the betrayal because it is not 
simply about trade. They're understanding that this is about their internet privacy. It's about a host of things. And this as will well help as accelerating the Brexit. Again, it's a ch world government's now here, folks. Yeah. Get ready in InfoWars. Everything we warned about for 20 years is now all happening because I wasn't lying. I have the documents. So get ready now. We're the opposition to world government. We're one of the most prominent groups in opposition to that. And we have a big responsibility, David. And we got a tranny problem here, Alex. Uh, you know, it's not the people in the bathrooms. It's an international tranny problem. We got the Trans-Pacific and the Transatlantic Treaties. They're cross-dressing as if they're some kind of free trade, and they're not. There's something completely different, and it's something we need to address at the national level. You know, we look at all these different issues, and we don't agree with Donald Trump on everything. We don't agree with anybody on everything. If you agree with everybody on everything, you're, you're not thinking. Cult. You're part of a cult, exactly. And so there are certain problems. You need to understand what they are. You need to think globally, understand these people are planning globally, and then you need to oppose them at the national level. At the local level, and we've got some news here about Tennessee. They're opposing some of these international treaties. They're opposing some of the uh, That's movements. That's right. Cities that, can fight. Individuals yeah, can fight. You can exactly. say, I didn't, I'm not, you know, if they're taxing us and they're not letting us vote, then then it's all fraud. I mean, this is simple stuff, folks. Well, and Alex, on this show just yesterday, the breaking news with Lord Mockton, how the, the, um, the, the other uh, scientist agreed with what he said, that the carbon dioxide cycle is not going to just... Him, you know, uh, re keep rebuilding itself and grow even bigger admitted, and double. He admitted he was wrong. He admitted he was it's wrong. It's not lensing. It's not amplifying. Absolutely. I want to yeah. spend 30 seconds, 40 seconds with each person about in your gut what you think of Donald Trump. I'm going to say what I think. We're going to go out to break. Let David Knight come back and cover all the incredible news he's got to go over. And then everybody will be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News, InfoWarsNews.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Donald Trump is somebody who senses destiny. He doesn't hate America. He likes prosperity. He isn't a globalist. He's so arrogant and on such a power trip, which is good at a certain level as a confident person, as an alpha male. They call that narcissism. It's not. It's called confidence. He believes these globalists are a bunch of crooks that have stolen control, and he's bare minimum shoving them out of the way to run the show. And I think he doesn't want to run the ship on the rocks. I think he likes America. I don't completely trust him. I think he can be manipulated. We're going to keep on a very short leash. He hadn't won the election yet, but this is only a sign of victories to come. And you keep your friends close and people you're not sure about even closer. And so bottom line, we're making history together. I'm very excited. Uh, and this is a victory for the people. Donald Trump is only a symbol. Rob Dew, well, uh, Donald Trump, you can comment as well, sir. I've never uh, voted Republican in an election. I voted in the primaries for Ron Paul. But this is probably the first election that I will uh, vote Republican. Usually I vote Libertarian. And, um, I, you know, Donald Trump has come to chew bubblegum and make America great again. And he's all out of bubblegum. That's all I got to say. I think he's great. I think, you know, a lot of the stuff he's saying is, you know, no other candidates are saying it. And if he lets people down, they're going to hold him to it. I agree. We got to hold him. We, ha we have to hold him accountable if he doesn't do what he says he's going to do. Exactly. It is time, you know, once he's he's going to be the if, if he's the president, he becomes president. We got to hold his feet to the fire. And that's that's our job. And that's what we got to They're all bought and paid for before. The fact is, who wouldn't want to make the country great and be the superstar? Yeah. I mean, because we got traitors fighting us. They're building a global government. They're going to go run that. They hate us. And taxes for the air we breathe, essentially. Yeah, well, screw and, them. And he is really an anti-establishment candidate. That's why the entire establishment can't stand the guy. And that, of course, includes the mainstream media. There are a bunch of arrogant people like George Will that gets in, an, in the Washington Post and says, we are sovereigns, you don't get to vote. I mean, he said, we are royalty. I mean, what an arrogant fruit bag. He's a man's man. He pisses off a lot of people. That's what I like to do. I like the fact that he 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 makes these uh, social justice warriors cry and cringe and go to their safe places and hide in their mom their mommy's basement and shove their faces in Cheetos like Glenn Beck did. Who else has ever done that to Glenn Beck? Donald Trump did. He's got my vote. That's awesome. All these people are weak. He's what we need to be strong again. Make America great again. Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I used to. I I would notice that I'd get uh, as enthusiastic about Donald Trump and his speeches like I did about Ron Paul a couple years ago. And I would wonder why, because he's not quite a libertarian like Ron Paul, obviously. You know, he's there's some things I disagree with him about, but it's kind of like restoring America is like restoring a hot rod that you're not going to have a show car like immediately after one weekend worth of work. You've got to do it in phases. You maybe put the car in primer and then show you it. You got to decide you exactly. don't want to junk the car. Exactly. Yeah.
And when people that, that are skeptical about a world government, all they got to do is look at the Holy Roman Empire. Like it was a hundreds of principalities that over several centuries, they gave up their sovereignty and became a unified state. And that's what they're trying to do with this right now. So Donald Trump, he's, he's not the perfect, but he's at least a nationalist. And that's what we need not only in America, but across the world. Well said, Kit Daniels. I don't like Donald Trump, but I can say that for the majority of the people in this race. At the end of the day, I am glad to see somebody beat the establishment with all that they threw at him, which is to say I'm not going for Bernie, Hillary, anybody else. Uh, but at the end of the day, he did what he went out there to do, and it was just to bring attention to some issues that really needed to be out there, regardless of whether, whatever you believe with him. Uh, I'm not a fan of the wall, some of the other things that he says, but uh, he did get down some base issues, especially when it concerns foreign policy that need to be addressed. McAfee 2016. All right, you'll get McAfee back on. Hey, hey, real quick, run over here, Jennings and Marley. Start talking about Jennings. Last seconds, come on. Well, after Good here, Joe what, what everyone else says, I'm just excited to see what he does. Excited to see if he makes any changes because words. It's are, exciting. That's why he's not exciting. a puppet. And words are easy to say. Words are powerful, but actions are going to speak a lot louder. Well so said, we'll Marley. All right, here we go, brother. Well, I'm just here to participate. That's it. <laughs> you come in and shoot bubble gum. I have, I'm, I'm just participating in America. All right. We'll make America great again. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, David Knight, what's coming up? You got 10 seconds. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different issues, Alex. We're going to look at uh, Hillary taking the jobs of the people in the coal areas and the GOP elitists saying that these people are losing their jobs are nothing but cannon fodder. We're also going to I know, take these a look elites are showing who they are. It's like, we are royalty, you filth. That's right. That's Talk right. radio's a disease. We'll and we're going to take callers, too. Wars.com forward slash show. We're on the mark. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in this last half hour of the Alex Jones Show, the fourth hour. We're going to continue with our callers, so hang on there, Mike, Ned, Dustin, Dave. Uh, people have been hanging on there the longest. We're going to go Dave first in just a moment. Uh, so get ready. Before we do, remember, we were just celebrating a big victory, the first step in taking back our national sovereignty. You know, when people talk about this, I would say that Trump has the opportunity to be the tip of the spear in reviving a new national sovereignty. Because that's what's being destroyed here. He also has the capability to crush the tyranny of political correctness that has been attacking our free speech. Those are key issues. Those are reasons to vote for him. And as I pointed out before, you know, we're never going to agree with anybody on every issue. And it's going to be a continual thing. But we can work with somebody. If he wants to uh, be a president of the people and go over the heads of the Congress, we can get this done. And he can be remembered in a couple of decades as one of the great presidents. People will be saying, uh, well, you know, I, I stood, uh, like they say now, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, and all the different things will be saying Donald Trump if he does this right, if he takes back our country from the grasp of the globalists. And I'm going to go to our callers here in just a moment. Before I do, real quickly, I want to remind you that as we celebrate, you still want to keep your powder dry. You want to keep your food stored. You want to prepare for the worst possible contingencies to help you do that. We've extended our mega food sale. Uh, this is 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Foods at InfoWarsStore.com. That's 30 to 40% off these select foods that have a shelf life of 25 years, all made in the USA, non-GMO, the best packaging you're going to find, and the best sale price, 30 to 40% off. That's InfoWars Select Storable Food at InfoWarsStore.com. And also, check out all the different products that we have at InfoWarsLife.com. 10% off all preparedness products and off of Survival Shield X2. Uh, so take a look at uh, the sales that we have on our preparedness products at InfoWarsLife.com. There's a 10% sale off on those as well at InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, Let's go to Dave in Michigan. Dave, you've waited for quite a while. Thank you for waiting. Go ahead. Hi, David. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, my my concern about Trump is that he's he's done a lot of things in the past and said a lot of things that are concerning. For example, he supported an assault weapon ban before. Now, recently he said he's pro-Second Amendment, but he did support an assault weapon ban. He's also supported, more recently, allowing um, men who identify as women to use the ladies' room. He's supported in the past allowing thousands of Syrian refugees to come into the country, saying it's the right thing to do. But then... Well, I would I would agree with those other two characterizations, but I, I don't think that when he was talking about uh, it's the right thing to do, I think he I, I think that's a mischaracterization of where he is on the immigration issue and on the refugee issue. But yeah, go ahead, continue. Now it is, but but it wasn't yeah. there at the time he said that. But 
you know, he's flip-flopped on a lot of important issues. And things like allowing uh, transgender men in the ladies' room. You know, if I asked you about that, what would your answer be, yes or no? Should that be okay? Well, I've already done a report on that. I think that that is a wrong issue. But there are the pl there are the right places to attack this, and there's the wrong places to attack it. I think what North Carolina has done is the right way to do it. I think that they need to respect private property. I think the answer from any presidential candidate ought to be, why are you asking me? I'm just running for president. I'm not here to micromanage every aspect of your life. We have a Tenth Amendment. We need to respect that. If people want to boycott North Carolina, that's fine. If people want to boycott Target, that's fine. We can work out these things. We don't need to have these top-down solutions. You need to understand, as I said before, we've got another tranny problem. we got the transatlantic and the transpacific problems. These are cross-dressing treaties that are going to destroy our country, that are going to manage our economy abroad. They're going to set up a globalist, multinational, crony capitalism. A globalism. So we need to oppose these types of things, and we need to understand the president cannot and should not do some things. The president cannot and should not be involved in some aspects. And so I don't look to a president to solve every problem. And when you talk about things like his passport for the assault weapon ban, uh, we had people saying the same things about Ronald Reagan. Remember when he ran? Remember, everybody said, hey, this is a guy who's a Democrat. He was the president of a union. Uh, he's not authentic on conservative issues. Now Ronald Reagan is the template for conservatism. And everybody said, he used to be a Democrat. He used to be a union president. He was against uh, uh, f uh, firearms. He was pro-choice. Okay, he was all of those things. Ronald Reagan changed on all of those things. So people can grow. They can change. And we also heard that Ronald Reagan could never beat the incumbent president. He was 15 points behind and now we've got Donald Trump, who is doing the same sort of things. He's pulling in blue-collar workers, just like Ronald Reagan did. So I think there's an opportunity here. I think we need to give him a chance. You know what? You don't have another choice here in this fight, quite frankly. And Donald Trump has been authentic on the issues of uh, trade and borders. He's been talking about that for 30, 35 years. He's going back. So when I realized he was authentic, when I saw that he's being advised by Pete Sessions, and, and if you're concerned about the weapon stuff, think about the fact that our old friend, Piers Morgan, has been pretty friendly to Donald Trump, but he says, I wouldn't vote for him because of his position on guns. Okay, He likes him because he knew him personally, because he was on his show. He won The Apprentice uh, when he was in that contest with him. So he's written some good things about Donald Trump, but he still says, I wouldn't vote for him because we have a fundamental disagreement on guns. So I don't think, I'm not concerned about the gun issue. I'm not concerned about the Supreme Court issue. And look, there are things that we can and should and will do at the state level. I've got a stack of articles here about what one state Tennessee has done on a number of issues. They're going to nullify executive orders and Supreme Court decisions. There's legislation uh, to do that that hasn't been passed, but they have passed uh, legislation to block uh, the enforcement of the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty. They did that at ten in Tennessee using the Tenth Amendment and saying, we have sovereignty here, we have a Tenth Amendment, and there are certain things that you're not going to take that are hands off. And they've also sued the federal government over refugee resettlement. They said, you don't have the right to do that, and they did that under the Tenth Amendment. We need to start nullifying things at the state level. We need to start nullifying things at the individual jury level. And we can't get everything done as at the presidency. What, what do you think about that, Dave? Well, first of all, Dave, I think you have the right idea that we need to think about nullifying things at the state level. That's a good idea. But my point is that I'm pretty concerned that he could go off the rails when he gets in office. And if he supports an assault weapon ban, what are you going to do about that? Or if he supports legislation, which is currently in the House of Representatives, to allow transgenders to use whatever restrooms they identify with or locker rooms, he could do all of that. And even though you and I both agree it's not right, he could do it. And we well, should have plans to... There, there are other, and there are other things that he could do as well. And I think one of the reasons why liberals are so freaked out about a President Trump is because they have advocated for the idea that the president should be an executive tyrant, that he should be able to issue these edicts. And whether or not the, the Congress is involved, whether or not the states are on board, that he's going to issue these edicts and he's going to get it done with his bureaucracy. And i got to say that if Donald Trump starts to do this stuff, I think we all need to, left and right, it's going to be a lesson for everybody to say, look, we have a process here. 
and you're going to have to get this through with the permission of the people, the states, and our elected representatives. We're not going to allow you to operate as a tyrant. There are checks and balances. And if he goes off the rails, it's going to be a good opportunity for us because we can then go back to these people uh, who were advocating for Obama to go off the rails, as he has, and we can say, let's join together. And there's going to be some honest people on both the left and right saying, you know what, we don't want to just have... Uh, a, a dictator elected once every four years. We want to go back to a divided government. We want to go back to representative government, and we don't want to have dictators. I think that would be a very healthy thing. Your thoughts? Okay, well, let's uh, I, let's go on to uh, Dustin in Florida. Dustin, go ahead. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, David. Um, well, let's talk about wrong issues like the last caller. We're focused on something that a president, it, he's not even a president, he's, he's, and he's not even in the general election yet, yet uh, President Barack Obama, if you listen to his commencement speech, it sounds like this twisted comedian that is, you know, uh, gladly uh, bowing down and, and getting out. Um, but more importantly, um, I'd like to get your take on geoengineering and CERN and the magnetic shield collapse and the radiation, the chemtrails that we're experiencing right now that are creating this mass, super hot summer and agitation with uh, the American people and the diversion tactics that Donald Trump is uh, uh, conspiring with right now. Because let's, let's, let's remember, he's a reality TV um, actor. You know? well, how, how is uh, he conspiring to cover up the ideas of, of chemtrails? I don't understand. I, and I don't uh, mean it that way, per se. I mean that he's not conspiring, but he's like the knight that showed up to slay the dragon, and the dragon wasn't home. You know, like, it, it, it's a, it's a, um, this is a uh, media frenzy. Meanwhile, the, you know, Barack Hussein Obama is sending 250, has sent 250 more troops to uh, the Middle East, which is over four or 5,000. We have Navy SEALs, which I was communications and intelligence in Iraq for the U.S. Army, for infantry, and I've been there, done that, and we have people dying over there for these things that are happening right now. Meanwhile, Trump is never going to make it into the presidency. If he is, he's going to be assassinated, just like uh, JFK and just like Abraham Lincoln. They were populists. They wanted to do the right things, and JFK was a real patriot, okay? He wasn't this, this talk show reality person. JFK was a real uh, patriot, and that's what happens to real patriots. And as far as... Uh, you know, if Trump was to make it, just to be light here, it would be Chuck Norris for his vice president. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I'm not going to say that uh, he can't win. I'm not going to say they're going to kill him. We don't know what's going to happen. They're going to oppose him in a number of ways. They're going to try to co-op him. I think he's his own man. I think he has been very frank and candid about different issues. He's spoken out on vaccines. I mean, you had Ben Carson coming out and saying... Uh, that he thought that everybody ought to get vaccines. And uh, he said, hey, I know employees who have had children who have gotten autism from vaccines. And Donald Trump has spoken out very frankly about what he believes, same thing that we do, that there is a connection between autism and vaccines. He's spoken out frankly on the 28 pages. And he was ridiculed as being an Alex Jones caller. And that was a national review about a month before it came out and was, was legitimized by 60 Minutes. He's going to be frank about the things that he believes in. He isn't going to believe everything that I believe. He's not going to believe everything that you believe. But I think that he is a more honest person, and I think he is approachable. I think you can reason with him, and I think that he is uh, going to be uh, open to ideas that the establishment is not going to be open to, the establishment politicians. And we're going to play a clip here in a moment from a guy who worked for McCain uh, just to show you the contempt that the establishment has for us. Look, we're looking at chemtrails. You brought that up. We had the uh, story that came out yesterday about the judge ordering a mother's child to be snatched because she believes in chemtrails and, and just how outrageous that was. Well, regardless of what you think about that issue, that is absolutely outrageous. Now, today we've got a story that's up on the Drudge Report that's out of the mirror in UK, and it's a mystery aircraft, they say. A mystery aircraft stuns onlookers after bizarre vapor trail leaves people stumped over what it was. I read this article and it's like, oh, yeah, what kind of a plane was this? And there's nothing at all about the plane, quite frankly. 
What they're concerned about is the fact that it's going overhead and leaving these persistent vapor trails and just going back and forth and back and forth and circling the area. And as they go through this, they say bizarre streams of vapor trails are pictured scattered across the skies as baffled motorists drove along the A-55. They say some suggest the aircraft could be a commercial flight circling the sky. They say, but a search of two real-time flight information websites found no sign of any aircraft flying over North Wales. And then they go on to say, well, maybe it's military. And they say, well, there were three Hawk aircraft airborne from RAF Valley this morning, but their flight paths were further south, mostly overland. No one was seen uh, flying north toward the Isle of Man. So when you look at this, they're looking at this and saying, you know, why is this? Why is this? This is kind of interesting. It's an interesting question. And we've had uh, the app that I talked about last night. We talked about this case, this lady with the chemtrails. People looking and crowdsourcing research about chemtrails. And when they see persistent contrails up there they are not going away, done in a cross, heavy cross-hatching pattern that gradually spreads out into a vast haze. They take pictures of it as they're laying down that pattern. And they send that in, and they started looking at all the people that were reporting these areas, and they could correlate that with an increase in surface temperature. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that they're doing. They say that they're going to uh, increase the Albion, the reflectance of the Earth, by putting these chemicals up there. But we can also measure the fact that we've got... Uh, precipitation of aluminum, barium, other elements that are coming out of these clouds that are there. So people are beginning to wake up to what's going on. And Donald Trump will come out and talk about that. There's no other politician we've had in our lifetime that even venture to go there because they would they would be afraid that they would be ridiculed that they would be called a conspiracy theorist donald trump is going to come out with whatever he thinks is true if he thinks that hillary clinton is a criminal and she is he will say so he will expose the frauds and the crimes of hillary clinton he's not afraid to say that and he's not afraid to say a lot of these things that's one of the key things opposing this self-censorship that these politicians who so desperately want to be approved of impose upon themselves. He rejects that. And so it's that candor, that opposition of the accepted political correctness that he will stand against that I think is so important. I need to move on to these other callers. Thank you, Dustin, for your call. Let's go to Mike in Colorado. Mike. Uh, yes, David, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, a right, couple quick things real, um, that I wanted to mention. Number one, uh, with your food special, um, I think it's ridiculous to miss out on it. I did the math, and it's like $4 um, per meal. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so 30 to 40% it's, it's, off. I mean, that's almost like, I, that, that's, you know, that's almost as much as, as Carly took off of the Hewlett Packard stock prices. Uh, so it's an amazing <laughs> discount. It's an amazing discount, and you really should stock up on it. This is something that lasts forever. So, yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm stocking up on it myself. Right. I mean, and the, uh, you know, the, it's something that the wives can get into because you can rotate it. You can use it for camping. It's not, you're not losing on it. It's not like something that's going to sit there for a while. That's right. Gathered up. It's something that can be actually used uh, right now. That's right. Um, it's great the, stuff. Uh, and I, so beyond that, I mean, I think that's, a, that's important to do that. And I, you know, I, the, the interviews with Matt Bracken recently that Alex has had has been, uh, has been earth shaking. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, my my gut is actually telling me with uh, with Donald Trump the reason why maybe Cruz has gotten out there, and it looks like he threw it at the end. I don't, you know, Cruz is actually a pretty good operator, but I don't. It almost looks like he threw the uh, the Indian election out there with the, especially you know, that, the plants that, that went over there. He went to talk with the Trump supporters, but either way, um, it just seems like they maybe have something in in mind for Trump. Um, but but on that line, is what I'm thinking with Trump, if he really wants to, um, you know, to make America great again protect themselves and protect, protect communities, he has to also talk locally. He doesn't have to, you know, concentrate it on it, you know, you know, 24-7, but he should mention things about, hey, we need to get back to our roots the way we are. I mean, I live in an area where, I mean, I've been in the same house now for about um, about three and a half years. I got out of the military, so I don't have, you know, a lot of people around me um, that I know, is, you know, people, you know, move, they PCS, they go to other um, stations or whatever. So I don't know that many people around me. You know, really, I know a couple of my neighbors, but... Uh, got about 30 you know, seconds. Mentioning... Got yeah, less than 30 he seconds. Hey, mm -hmm. he, he needs to be mentioning, hey, look, you gotta, you got to get together with your neighbors. You got uh, It shouldn't be a government program, but he says he should encourage people to, to inter, uh, you know, inter, intermingle amongst themselves. I agree. And develop plans and to help protect themselves. So. Thank you, Mike. And, and, you know, he's going to need to get allies at every level if he's going to get anything done. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our last segment of the Alex Jones Show on this May 4th, 2016. 
Just want to remind you all that we have 10% off all preparedness products, all InfoWars live formulas, things like Survival Shield X2, our nascent iodine, Secret 12, our B12 formulation, Deep Cleanse, Knockout, Silver Bullet, and others, 10% off. Also, 10% off all things like shortwave radios, heirloom seeds, water filters, security products, survival accessories. Check out InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for those amazing sales. And, of course, we still have the sale 30 to 40% off all select storable foods. Now, I'm looking at these headlines here. Oh, here's one. Uh, Cruz denies an Indiana loss would end his campaign. Oh, I'm sorry. That's uh, old news. That's two days ago. Uh, <laughs> we've got another one here. I hope this one comes true, though. Uh, breaking Kasich says he's going to exit the race. You know, he's in danger of becoming a verb. You know, like Captain Boycott, who became a verb. It could be, I guess, somebody who uh, sits on your couch and eats food and refuses to leave. Uh, we hear that he's going to leave today. And as people are saying, who's going to be the VP? I hear that Carly Fiorina is available uh, for Trump, but I don't think he'd be wise to take her. Let's look at what happened on the Democrat side here. We've got Bernie Sanders winning Indiana. Or did he? Okay. He beat Hillary Clinton in the vote 53% to 47, but right now they still got three delegates to allocate. He's only six delegates ahead of her. There are nine superdelegates. They reserved 10% of the delegates coming out of Indiana, the Democrat Party did. They reserved 10% of the delegates as superdelegates. And guess what? He didn't beat her by more than 10%. And these superdelegates, when they started talking to them back in November, back in February, the Bernie Sanders people were very upset. They said, look, you know, we've got nine delegates. Uh, we contacted all of them. AP did. They said, well, five of them got back to us. Four said they're definitely for, I'm sorry, six got back to us. Five were definitely for Hillary Clinton. Uh, one said uh, he was sitting on the fence, and the other three wouldn't even talk to us about it. So, look, folks, this is the way they've set it up. They've got a proportional election on all of these uh, Democrat races from the top to the bottom. There's no winner take all pretty much on the Democrat side. I think that almost all of them are proportional. That means that in all these cases, he's going to have to beat her by more than 10% or the establishment wins. You see how clever that is? That's how they rig these elections. And the people on the Democrat side need to understand what's going on with this. Now, on the Republican side, they're screaming bloody murder. They didn't do their math right or something went wrong. What happened? What happened? Well, we've got a guy who's a former McCain aide, Steve Schmidt, and he said this. On the cater said they scratched their chins to say, my God, the tone of this election. Have they not listened to talk radio for five minutes in this country that reaches 50 million people a day for a moment in the last 10 years? The tone is disgusting around our political discourse. And Trump has been a reflection of that tone in this steel cage match Republican primary. You look at the intellectual collapse of the conservative movement, the fading of giants like William F. Buckley. Okay, know, hold it right there, hold it right there. Okay, we've got a couple of things there. This steel cage match, and Trump has been a part of it. You know what they can't stand, the Republicans can't stand? It's the bare-knuckled truth. And he wants to talk about giants like William F. Buckley. No, you know, William F. Buckley pushed the idea of globalism, of these neocon wars, and it was National Review that went all out to stop Trump. Nobody did it more than National Review. They have lost all of their credibility, folks. They've lost all of their influence. And they're not free traders. They're free traders with a T-R-A-I-T-O-R-S. They betrayed this country with their open borders, with their globalist trade treaties, and they are unrepentant. They have absolutely nothing but contempt for the working man. They talk about how we are nothing but cannon fodder for their wars. I've got a clip. I didn't even get to that. This guy, Robert Cohen, we talked about it last night on the Nightly News. These people are cannon fodder, they say. Well, we'll find out who's the cannon fodder. Join us tonight for the nightly news, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.